you guys for joining us for Tax City Unfiltered Episode 5. I'm your host, producer Derek, and I've got Sonny here with us. And uh, guest for today, we have a former NFL player, now personal trainer for everything is the way he puts it, uh, Lucius <laughs> everything Smith. Everything everyone. Right? Yeah, um, from the Lou Training System. So um, thank you for joining us here on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff. Before we get into the topics, though, I do want to give you guys, if you guys are first-time watchers of the show, here is your warning, basically. We are probably going to offend you with this show. We don't care. Uh, we are most likely going to have a different opinion than you guys as well, and that's okay. That's what the show's well, not, about. Maybe not most likely, but I, I mean, it's possible. I am very possible. I mean, that's yeah. true. Let's not um, like, say we are. Yeah, man. I mean, hey, <laughs> it, it might be. Uh, but And we're not trying to please anybody's agenda with the show or anything that way. So if it's you guys are snowflakes out man. there and you guys are watching, you guys might want to tune out now. All right, so uh, that's your warning. that's your warning. Uh, you're free to let the uh, four letter words fly if you need to. Any this of that is a conversation. Um, yeah. But let's get into it. I I want to start here, Lou, by um, you introducing yourself, giving us a little bit of like your background and how you all got started with everything. Okay, my name is Lucian Smith. I uh, I got started with fitness from being an athlete and preparing to from part Warner. You know, understanding what the fitness was like. To play Paul Warner, and I had to wear a certain limit in order to play at a certain division. From there, I went to high school, did very well in high school as a uh, as a defensive back and running back. Where 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 uh, where are you where are you originally from? I'm originally from Columbus, Georgia. Okay. And my father was in the military, and we moved out to San Diego because he got transferred there. Uh-huh, so okay. I grew up basically in San Diego. Okay. All, all my football career basically started in San Diego. Ended up at Cal State Fullerton. From Cal State Fullerton, I became a free agent with the Los Angeles Rams. And from there, I played with the Los Angeles Rams, Kansas City Chiefs, and the San Diego Chargers. Um, I got into fitness because that's what they were promoting as, as me becoming a football player in the NFL and even going through college. Fitness, 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 testing all the time, uh, testing your strength, your speed, uh, that, that type of thing there. So I liked that uh, type of uh, uh, a challenge, that type of mentality. And I said to myself, hey, I'm going to help other people do what I did to help them be successful and even help the younger guys, uh, you know, to become successful, help them to understand what it's going to take to go to the next level, whether it be high school or college, even if you were to even uh, take the pro route. So you're saying like when you were going through all that, uh, you you realized that all the testing and uh, they put so much emphasis on fitness. And this is back when? uh, This was back in the 80s. Okay. The the early, the the late (laughs) 70s, the early 80s. So, so, So what I'm thinking is like, that was even then that they were putting emphasis on it. So c- can you imagine, like, say, an NFL locker room now, what kind of money and, and support for the, the athletes now that couldn't even dream of probably back then, right? Yeah. Um, back then, there was no uh, – we there was nowhere close <laughs> – we didn't get nowhere close to the money they have right now. Yeah. The so money they get right with now. Like a sauna and right. a masseuse, and that's about it? Yeah, but <laughs> what, what we had then was the guys that really worked on us were, the, were, were our, uh, our uh, athletic trainers. Sure. Athletic trainers and maybe the strength coach. But no one had personal trainers back then. Uh, no one had any personal. Nothing on the off season. Nothing on the off season. The only off season we had was, uh, say, you would go there to train at the facilities uh, if you were in town, and they would ask you to come and train. Uh, that was their way of keeping up with you. Sure. But uh, now, you know, they have, uh, 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 what do they call it, uh, uh, ATAs, uh, organized team activities, mm. you know, where the, the guys automatically have to come in. They get an evaluation. They want to see if they're in shape. Or, you know, they've got class, class uh, uh, studies going on, sure. uh, skull sections going, where they can start implementing the, uh, the, 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 the playbook with the guys so they don't have to worry about when they come to camp you know, mini camp. They can't get it all during mini camp. They can't get it all done correctly during right. the um, the uh, um, pre-season. preseason. So they start now developing them all the way through the off season. Interesting. And so it's a better system sure. now. And well, the inv- the players are an investment. They, they yes. get the best most out, right? Yeah. The, but I think more. Correct me if I'm wrong. It seems like on the outside looking in, that most you could say that most professional sports now compared to you know 30, 40 years ago. That the athlete doesn't take an off season. He's constantly not getting too far out of shape or always in shape, even in the off season, because they realize my season is year round, right? Just there's only one portion of that year that actually it it's a performance. Everything else leads up to that performance. Right, right. But back in the day, I'm gonna guess like back in the day, most of the guys 
either some guys are just innately always in shape, and other guys just they need preseason, they right. need a mini yeah. cap yes. just to get by, right? Yeah, yeah. right. And the other thing is too, I believe that the teams have more control of the individual mm. when they have these they organized like, team like, activities. Like, yeah. force them to. Yeah, because you're there. You, you have you yeah. have to be there, and then you got to look at what corporate America, how involved is corporate America at having these guys on the field, you know, performing. Because uh, there's a lot of uh, corporate uh, endorsements. There's a lot of money to yeah, be I, made yes, off of these players. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And they want the stadium to be filled. Right. So if you come in like we did, and you're not in good shape, but you always have to risk getting injured. Sure. Yeah, getting yeah. Injured. But I'm just saying, but usually if you're in pretty good shape, the risk of getting injured Are is less. Probably, than, is less. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it's, that's just a way to keep the stadium filled, uh, a way to keep corporate America actively involved with – you know, they're endorsing the players, endorsing the teams, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the, the television contracts. It's just a whole bunch. It's a big business now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's a money-making machine. Yes. Whether it's college football or uh, the pro NFL, I wanted to uh, kind of talk a little bit about how you knew, like when you knew maybe you were going to, like, make that decision to play professional football. Like what was that? Was it always, like, in the back burner of your head, I want to get there? Or was it on one up. of those things that, like, just happened and goes <laughs> – Oh, you know what? This is the career choice I'm going to go with. Or, 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 or I, maybe, maybe you, 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 you know, every young kid thinks about in the NFL. But what moment also did it become? Hey, this could be an actual real thing. Like, like at what moment do you realize I've got a shot, as opposed to every kid's dream, right? Well, okay, you, you realize it when you're very young. But here's what you really don't really understand: that you need someone to help you through to get to your goal. Yeah. Someone has to help you get to that goal. And one of the guys helped me was one of my college coaches, a linebacker coach. I think it was I think his name was uh, Greg Robinson. But I was thinking of becoming a professional athlete like around 11 or 12. Wow. You just don't grow up and say, I'm going to be a professional or I'm going to be a doctor. You start living that when you're very very young. Yeah. To me, you know. Yeah. Uh, you, like one year there was a World Series that the Angels ran. There was four kids. It really freaked me out. I don't even remember the players. Four kids, when they were 10 years old, that played Little League Baseball to end up in the World Series, and they knew they were going to play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They knew yeah. they were going to play professional baseball. Yeah. And, and like one of my friends and I used to always say, my, one of my good friends, Leroy Irving, we used to always say, in order to be a professional, you got to have that one thing inside that drives you that everyone doesn't have. And it's hard to explain what that one thing inside that eats at right. you that makes you want to go pursue that gold. Everyone doesn't have it. You know, some guys think they have it, but you got to have that one deep uh, uh, urgency, that energy, desire, that yeah. desire. You know, and people are born with it, I think. I think yeah. people are born with that. Just like we remember talking a while, a while ago, I always say in this gym, their whys are very strong. The whys, they, they want to do something or be something, right. are so strong that nothing can budge strong, that. Like yes. getting, go, getting into the ring, right? right. If you get in that ring as professional right. at any level, don't do it for fun. Don't do it for fun. <laughs> do it for real because yeah. you could get you could I mean get hurt very right. badly if that guy's there to put food on his table right. and you're there to have fun right even if you're physically and on paper a better fighter or can't be a better fighter or at times are a better fighter if that guy's hungrier lack of a better word than you are you're gonna get hurt you're gonna you're gonna suffer or, and that's I think that same thing is the drive for some people right. they're so hungry that nothing's going to deter them. And you literally, I mean, how many over, overachievers do you hear all the time that were, look at Tom Brady. Seven round job choice. Yeah. Who yeah. they would be. He, was so, yeah. he didn't even start in Michigan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Started his senior year. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. nobody saw anything in him, right? I th my guess is, I don't know if he publicly said it, but that drafting in, in, in the seventh round was probably what made Tom Brady. Yes, yes. I mean, he had a desire, but was, I don't know, maybe if he was drafted higher, we wouldn't have that state burning fire. Maybe he would. But he, I remember they said that he went up to I think Kraft and, and says uh, he like he said something to the effect of, "You're never gonna regret it. I'm gonna be starting. I'm gonna be starting quarterback for your team." Like he gave him like a date, like you know, two years or three years. Out. You know, right. You're not gonna regret it, regret it. Like he was yeah. hungry. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, my, my whole thing is is that uh, uh, you know talking about what you're talking about when he said he he told uh, with Robert Kraft that he's he's not gonna regret it. Um, what I understand is this. Our, our biggest coach and our biggest support system is ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I think the, the real athletes really have mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, you're, I, I see I, I see this one guy's doing really, really well. 
Now I got to be saying to myself, I got to really, if he makes a play, I got to make a play, but I got to really uh, trust myself. I have to understand who I am. I have to st- I understand that I'm going to make mistakes, but I have to be able to overcome those mistakes. Um, Don't be surprised because they'll, they'll happen. Yeah, they're going to with them. Yes. And so uh, your best coach is you. Your best support system is you. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is you. Good and point. you have to really believe in yourself. Your belief system has to be so strong. Yeah. Because you're going to see guys, and I, I, I would always say, hey, man, that guy's going to probably make the team. That's what the guys would say that made the team before us that were there uh, that we learned with. Yeah. We'd always say, that guy's probably going to make the team. And then we learned to look at that and evaluate other players, too, that we're competing with. And we were saying, wow, he's having a good camp. But then uh, you got to be – so you're never comfortable. Yeah. You're yeah. never comfortable Satisfied and taking it for point. granted. You're going to be there, so you work even harder and harder. Yeah. But most of it, it's a mental thing, strong belief system, and the support system really comes within yourself. I think it does. I think the belief system comes within yourself. Everything itself is uh, uh, internalized. Well, it's very funny that you bring that up because I just read an article uh, just recently about a lot of these like professional players that are going through a big depression right. Uh, state right now because they're not mentally in – the game properly because they've they've got to deal with the the craziest of fandoms now because of sports and how we create contract it. negotiations. You have people who are social media uh, yeah. saying we too, hate this team. We, it, yeah, it's way too connected and it's becoming this tough. We, we put them on this pedestal and we don't realize like they're human beings. They right. got to deal with right, the right. same stress as we do as normal people. But it's very uh, uh, funny that you bring that up. That it's like it's a mental thing you have to be in because I, some of the best players I think from like what you see interview wise and things have a better mental understanding and confidence in themselves. And some of these newer kids and newer, younger athletes that we're seeing, I don't know if they've been raised the same way to like deal with the same stuff or if they're just not uh, strong enough to deal with some of the stuff. Because I imagine you're going into a a football stadium when you played, you were away from home and the team didn't want you to win. The the fans out there were booing when you (laughs) did stuff. It was a tough thing, but you still had to overcome that, get on the field. Win or loss, it was one of those things you had to be mentally right. capable of uh, being in it. Yeah, you, you have to be uh, in, in turning strong. And see, the other thing is don't get so caught up in the media or the social media and believe in what they say about you being this great guy because you have a fan base. And you know, and then when the walls come uh, closing in and come tumbling down, don't believe them there either. Yeah, now you don't understand, you know, why you're depressed and why you're feeling bad. Yeah, you know, yeah. you gotta have this certain beliefs and and, and 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 have a reality check. Like, look, hey, you know, I don't believe everything I read. Don't and don't start getting caught up in the hype. Uh, just understand that, hey, um, you know, I'm playing this game because I enjoy playing this game. I play this game because I love playing this game, and. Uh, there's going to be some times where I'm not as good as I was before, yeah. you know, and, and, and if you understand uh, that there's, I don't see any reason why you should get depressed or, or whatever, making you have this social, uh, feel like you've socially been rejected. Only way you feel like that is because you're too caught up and you're on that social media yeah. all the time, looking for feedback, looking for approval. Yeah. yeah. Why I, would yeah, you look yeah. for approval? I, no? I, I think if, 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 if they think you're the devil, or God, they're both they're wrong. Yes. Yeah. So don't so like you said they might be loving because the X amount of fans, whatever. Don't buy that. Don't buy, don't buy into that. So that so that when that goes away for any stupid reason or no reason at all, and you're now the devil, don't buy into that because you never believe that you're a God. No. But if you start believing in that, and the slightest little chink in your armor, and you're gonna you're gonna fall apart. Yeah. You know? Exactly right. Exactly right. So I want to talk a little bit still on the, on the NFL side of things before we get into the personal training side of stuff. But um, musicians, athletes, they all kind of have this feeling when you get into a giant crowd, giant stadium, you hear the cheering, it's that natural high. But I, if, I, if my research was right, you had a touchdown. Is that, is, how, how did that feel to get that touchdown in a stadium? And if it, it, how was that like feeling overall for you? Like, yeah, where, where, where was this and when? And, it, was, yeah. it, was in, it, was in, it was in Kansas City against the Denver Broncos. You know, Elway, I think, it was so cold. It was like four degrees below zero. Oh, geez. We didn't have very many people in the, in the stadium. Arrowhead like, Stadium. Yeah, right? Arrowhead Stadium, like 11,000. He threw like seven interceptions. And they had their sweatsuits up under their uniform, on up under their, under their uniforms. Uh, I didn't have anything, not even a shirt on top, up under my jersey, just some sort of pads. But the feeling is, you know, you get this real um, mindfulness, 
this real uh, thing where you hear nothing. Everything's they, they say well, it's the sports that zone like. Yeah, where everything is blocked out when so you're in the field. Did it kind of feel like time slowed down a little yeah, bit? Yes, and yes. Through? Okay. It feels <laughs> like time slows down, and you're in this zone. Uh, and you basically have a lot of things locked out of your mind when you're planning the game. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're in a real you're in a really deep focus, especially when you even when you make good plays or bad plays. Yeah. You know, um the thing is is you got to be so focused that they don't distract you and take you out of your 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 thought process, you know, on how you see the game coming to you. You know, your feel of the game coming to you. Yeah, yeah. And and that's how guys get beat. You know, that's how I get beat uh, a, a, a few times in the NFL. Is when you get distracted, they, they they keep you looking at this like this, and then they hit you with a big punch. Uh, yeah, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. but then but then that game, uh, I hit them with the big punch because I wasn't getting distracted. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, if, if you go into the game and you feel like you got nothing to lose, because no matter what the guy you're going against, he's trained this as hard as you're training. Yeah. You know, you got this pretty much the same God. God's given him ability like he's given you ability. You know, you just say, I'm going to do what I do best, what I've been working on all week, whatever the game plan is that they've given us, and I'm just going to try to implement it and make sure that I got uh, open communications with my teammates uh, that are on the field with me and just go ahead and perform and, and, and see what happens. But most of the time, you don't hear anything. You don't yeah. you're, this, You don't even know the fans are even out there when yeah. you're playing a game. No, you don't even know the fans are so out there. Let me ask you this. Okay, okay three-parter. So, w- <laughs> one, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, one, who was the best quarterback you played against, okay. and and why? Okay. Best, uh, the toughest receiver. Now you were a cornerback or safety. Well, it depends. Both. on – Yeah, depending on the, the defense, depending on the package, right? Yeah, depending on the package. Yeah. Okay, so you had to go in coverage at any, at some point, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so you're always in coverage, right? So, uh, the the toughest receiver you ever had to uh, cover, and. There was a third question now. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> he lost it. Well, let's start with those two first. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, so the, the, the best, you know, it, it's you can say who the best. It's hard to say who the best quarterback is because uh, the best receiver didn't have the best quarterback. Yeah, yeah. It's but, kind but, of that but, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, okay, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one. So even if it's a quarterback, like like somehow you knew that this guy, he's on a bad team, but he he's a great player. Yes. Throw that in the mix too. So yeah. if, you, if 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 that applies, if that oh, applies. Okay, so so the best receiver that was really really tough was probably Steve Largent. Really? Yeah, because he had you know he was so uh, deceptive. Yeah, because he know? wasn't fast. He wasn't a fast guy. He was so de- deceptive, and he could stop on the dime. He was just a, a, and had very good hands. Jim and Zorn t- was a decent quarterback. Yeah, and he so. was tied up really well with the with with the, with the quarterback. You know, the the best quarterback. I, I would say that I played against. I mean, I played against Terry Bradshaw. I ter- played against uh, 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 um, Dan St- Fouch. Staubach. Yeah, well, I, I missed Staubach, but Dan okay. Fouch was a really good quarterback, and he was timed up a lot mm-hmm. with his guys. Yeah, you know, Joyner, West Chandler, Jefferson, yeah, all Winslow, those guys. You know, yeah. all those guys are really, really good. But you know, um, it, you know, it, it's uh, it's so hard to say because the quarterbacks back then, I think, were so much better than they are now. Because really? first of all, yes, okay, because. Uh, Quarterbacks were live. Oh yeah, okay. you know you can hit the quarterback. That's true. Now you can't hit the quarterbacks. The quarterbacks got a lot more, a uh, lot more, uh, say flexibility as far yeah. as protection. You know, uh, of, of keeping them from getting injured. You know, like I said, it's corporate America. They they, they want these guys on the field. They want the ratings. Yeah, that's yeah. A good point. But, but but when you look at what well, the guys that I played against, they had to be tough guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, Joe Montana was a really good quarterback. Yeah. Very very good. Uh, Dan Fouts, very, very good. Kenny Anderson, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terry Bradshaw, very, very good. Dan Fouts, very, very good. E- even uh, Vince Ferragamo and Pat Hayden, the guys that I played with, mm-hmm. were very, very – everyone was on an even scale back then. You didn't see guys throwing career 500 touchdowns. Come on. How are you throwing mm-hmm. 500 touchdowns? Yeah. And, 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 and the right. guys are in the Hall of Fame like uh, – got a bubble around them. Yeah, right like, 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 like uh, 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 Bart Starr only threw 150. In the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You know, you know, what, you know what's game, interesting? Yeah. Uh, on YouTube, there's, I forget the name of it, but there's a channel I subscribe to where they, I don't know who or maybe some guy in his house, or he, they post a lot of old uh, football games. Right. Like, meaning, I say old, uh, like the 70s, 80s, right. 90s, right? right? Like right off the TV. Right. Yeah. But but you get a feel for it. And it brings me back as right. a kid watching these games, being not just the production of of, you know, the, like we get spoiled out. We have a first down line. We yeah, have a goal ball, line yeah, on the right. on the right. We didn't have all that, right? Right, right, right? And 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 just but but 
just, besides the production of it, I was looking at the, like how the players, the the teams were were uh, like offense, for instance, right? Right. There weren't like audibles like they do nowadays. Yeah. I mean, every now and then you might get one really briefly. It yeah. was like it's really fast. It wasn't right. they get up that line. There's a couple of huts and that's it. Yeah. There's not they're moving things around. There wasn't as much movement. It right. seemed to me. Right. Than they are like now where they just like every, formations yeah. and the the whatever. Um, and the same thing with the defense. I didn't see from the games I saw my like, se- seven or eight of them different teams: Steelers, Cowboys. There wasn't like a lot of on defense wholesale changes either. Right. Like a packages like change like. Five guys. Right, right. It was like one or two at the most, and that was in the, it was like almost like Iron Man football. They're, right. The same guys were always yeah, out yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but is, 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 I'm an well, outsider looking in just on that. Right. Uh, that offense and defense, it looks, so much has changed. Right, I'm right. I'm not too familiar with like sports and numbers and things like that. I I, mean, I follow right, some of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I imagine the teams you were on are, were not as deep of a bench as the teams nowadays, right? I think what there's were a the lot rosters? more. Are they same or close? Well, well, I think the rosters were were uh, I can't really remember. Maybe forty. 40. I think they're in the fifties now. Then yeah, they're in the fifties now. They're in 40, so, four, like forty-five men rosters. Okay. Yeah. So everyone, everyone plays. Okay. If you, if you, you cannot be on a professional football team and not play. Not play. You're going to no, play special no teams. Yeah. No one's getting a free check. Yeah. Every, even the, even the backup uh, quarterback is going to hold for for a field goals for something. Yeah. yeah. Something. But everyone's going to be uh, uh, in the actively. Hunt. Yeah. In okay. the hunt. But um, you know. Um, well, I, I kind of I got lost track a little bit. Well, just kind of is there more players nowadays on the team that they oh, yeah. can kind of pull well, from? Yeah, and, what they do they specialize and, in players. Okay, when they go when they go out to the draft, uh, and they go out and, or they go out and scout uh, co- uh, college players, they're uh, given uh, getting these players drafting for si- situational players. Mm-hmm. They had that. They was just starting to do that after I left the game. You know, you know and I'm 62 years old now. And most of the guys. I'm going to, have to be their dads, and and the guys were much older back then uh, that were playing. They mm-hmm. wanted smart guys, more mm-hmm. wiser guys. Mm-hmm. Now they want young, fast, quick guys. You know, uh, you don't see very many guys playing until they're really, uh, you know, uh, 30s or or you know, middle 30s, early yeah, yeah. 30s, middle 30s. Um, but uh, I, I I think that. When you look for specialized guys for pass rush, specialized yeah. guys for the defend the run, specialized guys that you can play the three four defense that can play it better than a third, the four three a third down back yeah third like down that. back yeah, yeah so it's, it's all specialized but it's specialized because they kind of predict what situation is gonna be run or pass yeah and then right now it's more of a passing game yeah that's why yeah. you know it's protected quarterback yeah, yeah protected and... quarterback and they want to see the scoring yeah because yeah. uh, high scoring the I'm trying to remember when it happened the Mel Blunt rule right 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 because I know I don't care what year that happened in the seventies but that changed everything for defensive backs for me, run. Me, meaning they could literally like almost up to the point of tackling you yeah. not get a penalty now you can't you can't touch the receiver <laughs> right yeah, yeah yeah and I always tell everybody go listen. This guy, this quarterback couldn't have played during my, our era. That's that quarterback couldn't have played during our era because they weren't tough enough. Yeah. I don't want to name names of <laughs> quarterbacks that are playing now. Yeah. But during why our not, era. Why not? Come yeah, on, Lou. Yeah, during our era. Come on, Lou. During our, during our era. Brady. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Brady, Peyton Manning. You know, those, the, 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 the tough guy. Like, like Roethlisberger. Tough, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the tough guy it will be something like Eli. Okay. Eli is a tough guy to me. Yeah, you know, yeah. Eli was a very now, tough guy. Now, that, granted, uh, just an opinion here. Yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. He takes a beating, but a lot, of, a lot of it has to do. A lot of it's offensive line, right? But a lot of it sometimes he he tends to hold the ball too long, right? Right. But nonetheless, he's still taking it. That's a tough guy. Yeah, yeah. But the, what I'm saying is, he doesn't get up and do this to the referee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Eli is not doing that. Yeah, you know, yeah, a, a, a lot point. of players did that. Plus, his dad was tough. His dad was running up, I think, for the Heisman Trophy. I forget who he was running up. There's against. a good quarterback yeah. on a bad team. Yes, a good quarterback <laughs> a good on a bad team. That Archie was a, Manning. Archie Manning was a very, very good quarterback. And today's football, he ran for his life. He would have killed it today. He was, yeah. he, was yeah. he was, he was effective running for yeah. his yeah. life. Well, yes. that, that's kind of like this thing that we always have is like the big comparison is who's the next Michael Jordan kind of in basketball. And you've got like you've got these people who are like, oh, he's just a good. But I mean, when you go back and you do the same thing with quarterbacks or with receivers right. or this kind of stuff, and you make 
make that comparison, it's an unfair comparison. The sport right. yeah, is yeah, different. It's yeah, changed. It's evolved. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing. And 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 you know, and when the size of the players, are, yeah, are, are are bigger, stronger because the, the, the physical fitness started coming in there. Say like in the early '80s mm -hmm. when they really start implementing right. serious uh, off-season strength training, year you know, round. and conditioning. Yeah, year round. Uh, that's when it really came in. All the Olympic lifts, all the powerlifting. You know, all these different systems. It's for gone are the days of the Packers well, in the 60s where football was just like a side gig and they had a job on the offseason. Yes. And, yeah. and it's, they just it's the, beers and whatever. Yeah, the Babe Ruth uh, kind of thing. It's yeah. like you can smoke and drink and yeah, then yeah. hit home runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're going to, you know, like the players nowadays are well driven machines. Right, I mean, right. will Babe Ruth be as good as he is back then as today? Like, I don't yeah. know. Like, I can, I can't not, like, the greats are great because of the time that they were at, but are they as great nowadays with the machines that we've like well oiled and and put yeah. through? Remember, remember the story I told you about the first Super Bowl in L.A. Yeah. I, you, uh, my, my my uncle my uncle told me this. He says they didn't even sell out the, uh, the Coliseum and that yeah. they were giving away tickets. It, it was the Packers and uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Or, or, uh, who I think it? so. I think so. Yeah, the yeah. first Super Bowl yeah. and it was in the L.A. Coliseum. Right. right. And he says. I say he said I said I bought a ticket for five bucks, right? And the place was still half empty, and they yeah, couldn't yeah. give away tickets because yes. like what's the Super Bowl right, thing, right? Right. right. Now look at us. Yes, it's, like, it's amazing. It's crazy. It's a lot of hype. So yeah. let me ask you this, and let's make this transition a little bit because now you're doing the per, uh, personal trainer stuff. You're on a uh, very health uh, uh, based on your plant based diet. Um, you do a lot of stuff in the MMA world and uh, all kinds of other things. You were talking about a, ru a rugby company you're working with, right. but um. With the knowledge and education you have now on health, do you think if you had that back when Ooh, you were younger, how dangerous yeah. how would you be? Di how different of a player would you have been? What you know now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think about that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think the biggest part, uh, what I would know right now is, is mostly the controlling your emotions, the psychological part, you know, uh, knowing uh, how important it is to get the rest. Knowing how important it is to get the strength training in, yeah. you know, to make you to be prepared physically as well as uh, mentally, you know, psychologically, yeah. you know, those are all things that I would have focused on a little bit more. Uh, I was already into the diet thing. Okay. I've, I've never really been a, a bad guy that's, uh, that had bad eating habits, but I, I still was the guy that would gain weight during the off season because that's just yeah. you know what I did. But uh, you know, with the MMA training, I think that it's. Uh, uh, a very, very good, uh, the reason why I like MMA training, because it's something like helping someone along the way to become better. When I was younger, um, I didn't have no one to help me along the way, but what I did have to do was go out and sell uh, uh, candy in order to get my membership to play football. Your parents yep. have to pay for it. Yep. So I'm giving back. I give back to the, the Part Warner kids. I give back to the high school wrestlers, back to baseball. Uh, any youth sport, and I give back to the uh, the MMA guys because a lot of them they can't afford the off season training to go train with yeah. the trainer, you know, and then they have to go out and sell tickets to fight, yes. you know. So I, what I try to do is support them. I buy, if there's a fight coming up, I buy I try to buy a ticket for every fight of an MMA guy that I'm involved with or if I'm involved with that club. Yeah. I support them. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, that that's a, a wholehearted way to right. show support. It yeah. is Because that's one of the things on the backside of the sports. Like, yes, the big, huge UFC uh, fights that are out there, they're making millions of dollars. Right. But to get to that level, There's we don't see – the the amount of effort and time and again people make this oh overnight sensation no there is no overnight right, sensation right, right. there are years and years of dedicated training years and years of going through the process and hopefully getting the break because of all the players at your time that you were playing football there could have been very easily someone else that took your spot oh exactly and and, and that's that's one of those things where it, it's not to diminish anyone's training or skills or anything but we have a like you said a shitload of people here in the United yeah, States yeah. to pull from. And then now when I look at the, the baseball circuit, we're pulling people from South America. That's very popular. We've got Japanese players. Right, right. The world is g getting smaller. Right. We're pulling players for all of our sports. We're the NFL has rugby players now playing in it. Right, and right. so <laughs> yeah, like yeah. they're playing Australian yeah. football in the, in the way you can look yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, and yes, so, yeah. <laughs> so how, how, did, how did you make the transition to MMA? Because I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I know uh, – Sam Remark told me that you have a black belt in... In jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Tell me that journey. 
<laughs> that, Did that, that come that, before football or after football? After football. Okay. You know, I, I any, would, any martial arts uh, uh, interest while in football or earlier age? Well, well, or I've always happened I've, after. I've always liked martial arts. Uh, but you don't do it uh, during your football career. <laughs> I mean, you can, but yeah. you better like that Yeah, you better, you better not get hurt. But the, the journey uh, to, to getting to getting the uh, black belt in jujitsu, you know, was a very uh, long journey. You know, I, I I started doing it at 35 after I left football, and someone introduced it to me one day and said, "Lou, you ought to go do this." When was this? And when I was 35. Wow. No, no, I'm yeah, saying because yeah. you know jujitsu. Yeah, Only right, in recent years. Right when they came. Right when they wow. came. Uh, like a, a couple years after the, after the Gracies brought it to America. Like in South Bay somewhere, right? Or yeah, uh, up at up at the Gracie Studios up in Torrance. Yeah. Then I went over to uh, work with the Machados. But my, my thing uh, with the jiu-jitsu, it took me a really long time. I, I, got, I got the black belt like, say, four years ago, uh, somewhere around there. That's, that's yeah. not bad. No, no, but, you know, I, I had times where, you know, I was, I was up and down with yeah. that sport. Because mm-hmm. I didn't. I'm, I'm not a three-dimensional guy where I can see the techniques, mm. you know, right away. Some guys, they see, oh, I see how they did yeah. that. And they see the mistake that the guy they're going against makes, and they, they learn how to do the, do the technique. But I was up and down. Like, one time I stopped for 10 years, wow. you know. At a, at a frustration well, with it? Or you... well, well, I got bored of it. Okay. I got bored of it because so you were losing interest because yeah. maybe you got a plateau where you just couldn't. I I, I we weren't going, advancing as much. Yeah, I, I wasn't advancing as much. But what really helped me, I tell you, what really helped me. I had a lot of guys help me along the way. Uh, you know, uh, Eric Polson helped me. He's the guy I'm with right now. He's been a, a big mentor of mine. That's all, that's always mentoring to me and helped me to understand things. You know, I I, I spent some time with uh, you know Higgin Higgin Machado, his organization. Uh, you know, I, I spent some time with Javier Vasquez, with uh, Tinguinha. You know, uh, I spent some time with a lot of guys like that, a lot of the great guys. Mm. And uh, my home is, 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 is probably more with, uh, with uh, CSW. I, you know, I feel like we're, we're, we're a family, right. and I'm, I'm much older now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the Jiu-Jitsu journal, uh, journey was uh, – I did some competitions. Mm. I won the United States Championship. Uh, I went to the Pan Am Games, the very first one they had here. I went mm. to the quarterfinals. So I, I, I've been out there involved in some tournaments. I just don't like uh, spending a whole day. I get bored because, you know, in the NFL, they go to kickoffs at one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Kickoffs going to be at one-on-one. Well, yeah. If they tell you you're going to have a match at 10 a.m., but guess what? <laughs> the match is at 11 o'clock p.m. Yeah. That By that nuts. time, I'm going crazy. Yeah, you know, that so that, that's why I, I, you know, this is also interesting. But I, I'm just happy to be back in it. You know, I'm happy I, I, I reached the main goal was getting the, the belt. But, you know, I, I'm not going to say I always perform like a black belt. You know, I just have fun with it now. There's some guys, that's all about uh, ability. There's guys that are blue belts and poor belts that are as good yeah. as the guys that are black belts. Yeah, you know, yeah, a lot, yeah, not in any martial art, right, even within a martial art in particular, not all black belts are equal. No, no, I mean, exactly. I, I mean, I, not, not to mention... I'm even going further because the first thing I, I mentioned with that is the lineage of where you got it, right? Right. But let's say within that lineage, sometimes even they might have multiple black belts. Even then, they're not always equal. Never, never. Right? There's degrees of it, yes. right? So, and and I remember uh, when I was uh, in another martial art, I was in Aikido for a little bit. Uh, yeah, send your hate mail to uh, <laughs> um, um, one of the guys who's, who's like a third degree black belt. He says, once you become a black belt, it doesn't mean that you're bitter than everybody. It just means now, now you, now you're a serious student. Right. That's all that means. Yes. And now the journey has begun. Yeah, that's what now the journey. starting. Yes, and it's integrity, respecting the sport, respecting your peers. You know, that's the main thing. Do you respect all the all the people around you that are just coming into the game or have been there? You got to respect them. You got to have integrity. There's oh, ethics. Yeah. There's a whole bunch in there. Uh, have they have that belt around your waist that people are looking at when they look at you? Yeah, when yeah. they see you, you know you gotta you know really uh, show them that that you really respect them, and it, that's very important. You know, yeah. I think it is. There's a lot, yeah. just, just like we talk about stolen valor in the military, where guys pretend that they're in the military and they're not. Right. That's a that's a. Um, it's illegal if you get some benefit from it, right. but ethically and morally to veterans, that's like a slap in the face. Well, yeah, yes. Right. Same thing in the martial arts world. There's a lot of fakes out there that say they're black belts or whatever. They lie, and they're not. Mm. That that I'm not going to say it's the same level, but it's the same type of disrespect that you would get. I mean, I've seen videos of guys like uh, getting called out, and, and, and some of the Brazilian guys, man, if, depending on what school you're in, if they yeah. find out you're fake, yeah. 
That, that might not end well. Yeah. No, no, it won't, well, won't end well. I mean, with anything that like we should understand that like we're we're standing on the shoulder of giants in in the sense of that these people have put the groundwork in to learn the techniques that we go for by now. Excuse me, the advancements any sport that we've had is because of those people Dangerous. going through. I mean, we have people uh, NFL uh, uh, controversial topic, but it like with all the injuries that have uh, played, and now we're actually doing a lot more testing and trying to get safer for our players so that they can have longer runs or we can have higher scoring games and stuff. Because I look, I was watching a basketball game the other day, and it was a hundred and fifty some points that they were at on a game. I'm like. I don't remember basketball <laughs> scoring that many that points. Like the yeah, yeah, I was like, this is crazy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and this was just a regular season game because I was like, when they broke a hundred, that was like a big yeah. deal. Well, yeah, even in basketball, uh, I don't know if you were a basketball fan at all, but uh, in the '80s, like when the Jordan Lakers, Boston, when right. you could look at any given game, right, on YouTube, whatever, and find that the physicality in about five minutes, you can see the physicality in just a regular game with nothing on the line except a regular game. Is ten times more intense than like a game seven in the NBA uh, championships today. Right, right. Yeah, it's just a whole different mindset. Right, yeah, right? right. It's just crazy. Maybe maybe society in general. Right, right? right. Our sports are are always a good uh, measuring stick of how we are in society in general. Right. right. I always say this. I I, I feel like somehow we we kind of pussyfied our. Our, population, our population and maybe well, it's kind of leaked into some of our sports too. well we we discussed a little bit and you have a good stance on it from uh just talking with you a little bit but as far as mental state and confidence going into what you're doing and yeah you can get bored with something and go away from it but like how how do you define yourself to get yourself into a mental state to do what you want to do well the way i define that is this I do not like training. Okay. I don't like training. So uh, that that's, yeah, uh, that's seems that's controversy shocking, right? for my personal trainer. <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna say it. I don't. I don't. I don't like training. Okay. But I like the results and how you feel. Okay. Which the health part, the benefits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I really like and enjoy the most. I feel good. Uh, I'm, I feel good to help others. You know, to to share with them what I know. Uh, I want to see others do well. But uh, the most important thing is. It's very hard for me to get up every morning to go work out too. Yeah. It's very hard. Oh yeah. It's very hard. Not because I bet you a lot of people like to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's very very hard. Yeah. But I know that. Uh, I, like I said, I like I like the benefit. I like how it feels afterwards. Yeah. You know, I like helping people. I like uh, the responsibility of knowing that if I don't give this person my best, you know, to help them uh, to achieve their goal then uh, I feel like I've not done what I needed to do. I haven't done my, my job. part of the agreement. Right? Yeah, yeah, part of the agreement. But it, but it comes from within yourself first. Yeah. Nothing's easy to do. And everyone can say, everyone to me cannot say that they like fitness, they like working out. Even when you go do jiu-jitsu, you're going in there, you know, I had a rough day. I'm tired of getting enough sleep. I don't want to want to be here. But, you know, I go there because... I do that. I yeah, do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I go there because... The responsibility to the guys that I wear this belt. Yeah. You know, they need to know that uh, I'm there to support them. Yeah. And I think when they see me in front with my belt on, that motivates them. That gives them, I'm going to be there one day where he is. You know, like one thing that, that, that Sonny said, all black belts aren't equal. And they look at you and they go, well, Lou's 62 years old. You know, and I feel like some guys... When come, it, they come, test the belt. Yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 they test the belt. Like, I, 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 I go pulsing. <laughs> Why are all these guys challenging me? <laughs> he goes, because you got a black belt on. So let's, let's see if that's legit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you know, you're, you're sitting in there. You know how they do it, Sonny. You're, you're, there's like ten of us in there, and I'm just kneeling down. Someone comes and sw squats in front of you, like, oh my gosh, you know they're gonna go crazy. Like, you know, go. but you got to control them. You know, but you know, so th that that's the way. So it is. so at 62, how many young guns have you put to shame with that black belt? Well, <laughs> put this way. Here's here's what I learned to do. here's what I really learned to do to be calm and to survive and and to not uh, uh, get real uh, critical about how they're coming at you to understand that like he says they want to see where you really are mm -hmm. and the, the main thing is survive I I, I, I think it's surviving mm -hmm. and be relaxed and don't get uh, emotionally caught up in what's going on yeah you know. Be real calm and have fun and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I'm doing this uh, because 
I feel good. Yeah. I don't get paid to do this. Yeah. I'm not competing. <laughs> you know, it's just a relaxation yeah, yeah. thing. I like the camaraderie. The camaraderie, I like being with the different people. You know, the guys, the young kids, the, the, the ladies that are involved. I like all those things. You know, about I like the family. It reminds me of what? What does it remind me of? Take one guess. The, the your team. Yeah, my yeah. team. Your team. The, the team. From NFL. So I, I like, yeah. yeah, we. That well, stuff brainwashes you. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you're you spending. Feel that, you'll feel that that void if it's missing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, so a fraternity, like you be, uh, belonging right, to. There you go. Yeah. Because yeah. because for the longest time, when you're in that on that team, you're dealing with them every day. Right. You're uh, training. You're in the locker room. You're on right. buses. You're on planes. Right. You're traveling. Everything. Right. You're yeah. with those people. Yeah. So you, you love them or hate them. Yeah. You love. You them have to put up yes. with them <laughs> and then you then have to work with them on the field for the time that you're playing to try and win something and, right. and that that's you're making that's me a thing. feel bad because now and i'm just trying to think like i think i see the guys at, at hardcore more yeah. than i see my mom oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was thinking oh my god yeah, yeah. So bad yeah. yeah well yeah. okay so hold on now let's ask this yeah. did you buy the guys at hardcore a christmas gift or did you buy your mom a christmas okay so there you go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit more family yeah. with the mom yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah, fine yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mom expecting I yeah feel like, better. yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, feel, yeah feel a little better yeah yeah um Let's let's talk a little bit. How did uh, the transition into MMA happen? So was that just a natural f transition, or did it just by happenstance kind of it, thing? It happened like this. This is how it happened. Um, something came up where I was training with Eric Paulson, and then he says, "I got a guy that I want you to train." Eric Paulson was training me. He said, "I got a guy." By, I want by, you by the way, I'm, I, I don't think we made this clear. CSW, for those who don't know, is uh, here in Southern California, yeah. in Brea, in Brea, which is the, the main. Location, right? Yeah, the main no, location okay. for, sorry, uh, for Eric Post and CSW. Just give him some, some love, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He asked me about uh, training Josh Burnett. He asked me that I know my guy. I don't know the guy. So, you know, we he, he uh, brought us both together. And Josh Burnett and I uh, came to an agreement on, you know, the days we're going to train, how we we're going to train. And uh, I just asked him to let me do what I do. And you just follow. Yeah. And he let me, uh, he actually let me, you know, do my business, do my, put my system uh, together in, in the, the uh, to get him into my system, okay, and we, and that's how it came about. You know, it all came, uh, the MMA training all started with, like I said, Eric Paulson, my mentor. You know, uh, he's one that really got me heavily into it. You know, because before I was training, I was training guys, but it was just regular jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but when I started training guys for real fighting, it became with Eric Paulson when they start when they start doing prize fighting. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about. Lou training system okay and like what what actually does that entail what does it go into like little deep, i mean you don't have to go through the full routine yeah. but like what does that actually and, entail and for how's you? it evolved from that day where where paul uh, paulson lets you the loose system then that how the system was then and how it is now how's it evolved also okay uh i'm sure it's evolved in some big ways yeah yeah uh you know the the, the way the system uh, was back then was when we say loose training system we're doing a lot of different things you know, uh, we're, we're, we're doing uh, agility uh, training. We're doing speed, power, strength training, uh, mobility training. Uh, we're, we're training different sports. No one has really the same workout. So I try to customize the workout uh, for the ac actual individual for his needs. We want to maintain the strengths and, and develop the weaknesses. Uh, so I started training. Uh, first, I started working with Marvin Marinovich after I left oh, the NFL. Okay. I started working with Marvin Marinovich. Marvin Mar uh, Mar Marinovich. So, uh, a father of Todd Marinovich, Todd Marinovich yes. went to USC, played for the Raiders. Right. Um, yeah, so he, he, he's the guy that got me in, into all the regular training, the sports okay. part of it. You know, like I started training uh, the, the Olympic women's softball players. Okay. You know, uh, yeah. Lisa Fernandez, Lurie, Lurie Harrigan, Leo Miko O'Brien, uh, Stacey Newman. Uh, I started training a lot of, a lot of uh, players like that. Uh, Tia uh, Ballinger, who was... Uh, uh, Gatorade Player of the Year, a, 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 a good uh, uh, player. Uh, um, Katie Cochran. I mean, I trained so many great women softball players. Then I started uh, training great uh, high school athletes. Uh, but, you know, my whole thing is, is I really did share with them, and I think this is the most important thing, is can you train a person? Now you got to do what? Go out and watch them to see how they perform. Yeah. Because you just can't train a person and say bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so when I train them, I like to go watch them. Yeah. Now, what am I doing See the right? Results. Yeah. What am Good, I doing bad, right? Or whatever. Yes. What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? How can I help them? And uh, and a lot of it uh, comes down to them interacting with their coach and their team 
on how they've been uh, received. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I can share with them. Because I went through that whole process and become a professional athlete. Mm. Like you said, you're, you're never comfortable. Yeah. You can always use, lose your position. Yeah, yeah. So I, I share a lot of that stuff with them. But I would always go out and watch uh, uh, my people uh, perform. I would always go out and watch. Now, I'm talking about the, the Olympic girls, right? The Olympic girls were really good girls. And uh, one day the, uh, um, the committee asked me to come down to the Chula Vista Olympic facilities mm -hmm. to, to uh, watch the girls. So I go down there. And I evaluated the girls, you know, just by watching them and, and, and letting them know what I uh, thought I seen by watching them perform. And I was giving them some examples of certain players. And I said, one player, you know, we, we think she slowed down. Mm -hmm. I go, no, she didn't slow down. She's not judging the ball coming off the bat. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they played the world. They played the world championship against Japan. So what happened? She, if she's not judging the ball coming off the bat. The ball hits her glove, and guess where it goes? Over the fence for a home run. Oh, geez, yeah. So I told them. Mm -hmm. She doesn't see the ball. She's not reading the ball coming off the bat that well. And why is that? Yeah. You know, and it's not, it has nothing to do with her speed. She's, she's still fast. Yeah. Because that's what I noticed that she was doing yeah. when I was watching practice. Yeah. When I went down to the United States Olympic Committee for Women's Softball. But, you know, th you know that that's how I, I, I involved. And I just try to help people out any way that they like. And it's mostly not only with the uh, training, but it's also – um, the, the 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 experience that you have on how you got to become a, where you got in athletics. Yeah, you know I, that's the most important thing. I, I think one thing that you kind of hit on, and I, and I don't think a lot of trainers um, do that is you hit it. You you followed up like yes. after the fact because because I think a lot of guys get in their system like like again we were talking earlier. You know, hey, this you can get the best results, and they fit the person with the system, and that's the system around the person. Right. And then expecting, or or even if they did that, even if you have your system into the person, that's just the best guess at that point, right? Right. right You're right. still trying to. It's like you know, adjustments here, there, right. whatever. Yeah, yes. But but the best adjustment is is to actually see what results that yeah. you probably clarify when you first sit down, like what is it you want to achieve, right? And if that's not being gained, you find out what what worked, what didn't. Right. Go back. Tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, and then prove it next time, right? Right. I don't think a lot of trainers go to that point. I think they just well, set a routine, make sure they hold accountable to do that, right. and then that's it. And right. if they're good results or bad results, it doesn't matter. Hey, it wasn't me, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. guessing a lot of them just like, hey, I did my job, right, right. but it's about results. Well, that, well, that's one of the things I'm really appreciating uh, with the conversation we're having is that you're not just looking at it from the physical side of things. Like, yes, great, your numbers are fast. You're right. quick, you can do this. Great, you can bench this, you can do yeah. that. But you're also looking at like, oh, hey, there's a lack of a mental state to yes. be in for these players. Right. So, And you're seeing that from the results because we see it all the time in our sport here with Airsoft that there are players that are, are, are I'm good at this, I'm good at this, or I'm, right. I'm quick. At, but they're not looking at the mental state they need to be in to be a better athlete right. in the sport. And, I, I mean, Airsoft in general is a very uh, a new athletic sport in the right. sense. It's a, more uh, of a I, hobby, but it's – I don't know if I mean to say sport. But uh, well, I mean, there, there's there's competition involved, and it's there's growing. Some, there, there's some athletic uh, moments yeah. in it, but I still wouldn't call I mean, Listen, they, they, I, I mean, there's there's competition, but that that's the thing. A lot of uh, – there's a maturity level that's still not there, and I, and that's one thing that comes with age, and, and you said it a little earlier um, about how, like, mentally you got yourself uh, uh, prepared, and you as you grew older, those are things that come up. Right. Because, I mean, to be fair – these 18 year old athletes that are coming right out of high school, they don't know the ins and outs no. of all the psychological stress that this. things that come year, into place. 18, 19 year old gazillionaires. Right? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. yeah hundred percent. Right. So a I whole mean, different, a whole different ball game yeah. now. Uh, now you're really but, messing up the mix. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, a tough thing. It's not just about being a physically fit person, but also mentally fit to do what you're doing. Right. And I mean, I, I cannot like speak to say I can go into a ring and, and there's no mental way I'm going to be able to handle <laughs> that right, at right, all. Right. That is not my thing. But it does take a certain mental ability for people to go in and get punched in get the face, punched in the <laughs> face yeah, yeah. and keep no wanting to do it. Happen, and yeah. you have to be mentally strong. So like, how how do you go about getting your 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 athletes that you're training into that same kind of mindset? Because 
for you, it seems like you're getting up every day. Yeah. You're doing the things. Yeah. Might, like you said, you might not like it that day. You might not yeah. want to do it, but you do it. How yeah. do you get your your your, your trainees into yeah. that as and, well? Well, my, my whole thing is this. What, what, what everyone has to understand is this. You're training really hard. Your opponent's training really hard. Yeah. You know, don't look at it like, yes, you want to win. But that's not, that's not, you got to look at the enjoyment and the fun of what you're doing. Yeah. And you have to take it at a serious level, too. The enjoyment of the fun. Because if you start looking like, I got to win, I got to win, I got to win. Then yeah. how are you going to have fun training and going and competing? Yeah. You're thinking, okay, you, you're you carrying so much anxiety, so much on your shoulders that you're not going to perform anyway. You got to go in there and say, whatever ability that I have, I have to really utilize it in my sport that God's given me. Yeah. He's going to utilize whatever ability that he has. Our ability is going to go against each other. And then, you know, well, whoever ability does whatever – is going to be the guy that that's going to uh, you know be successful in the end. Going to get the, the more positive results. My thing I, that I tell everyone: let's just play the game. When I coach high school football and junior college football, let's just play the game and see what happens in the end. That's all we can do. Right. Okay. You know, we we can go and say well, we should win. Yeah, yeah. You know, hopefully we're going to win. Yeah. And we want to win, but. It's not always going to happen. The logic of that is not good. And are we yeah. prepared for that? Yeah, yeah, we prepared. You have to understand what comes with winning and what comes with losing. And I'm going to tell you which one's going to win. The yeah. guy that loses is better than the guy that wins. Because yeah. you got to look at it like this. If the guys that won all the time, then why aren't they the guys that are the best coaches, the best, uh, 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 say, uh, managers or whatever you want to say, or, or, or best leaders? They're not. Yeah. If you look, if you look at all the guys that you see on TV that do the sports commentating, you know you see a very few that are really good yeah. guys. It's not automatic. And it's not yeah. automatic because you played it and you're very, very, very good. Same thing with coaches. Yeah, with coaches, the guys to me that are the best and the guys that can give the, have the most wisdom are the guys that haven't won as much as the guys that have yeah. won. The I guys that won totally agree with don't. That. What do they have to give you? Yeah. What can they? They don't. They have the scales never done this on them. You yeah. know what? The scales it, always been like this. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is, Lou? I think this is a, maybe. Think of the uh, uh, a journeyman backup quarterback in the NFL. Right. Maybe if he when he retires after X amount of years, he's had five starts in his career. Right. right. Always holding a clipboard. Those guys, backups in general, third deep on the bench, just right. like even even like in NFL, you say everybody gets to play, but some obviously more than others. Right, right. They they have to be more into the game than the guy who's always starting. He's right. like whatever. He, the guy who's on the bench works harder. He he's got to be in tune with everything because he because obviously physically or talent wise he doesn't have as much as the, the starter. So he's got to make it up in other areas. Yeah. It has to do with knowledge. What this and that. So that's why I believe that guy, if he so loves football and depending on what other things are in his life, if he wants to be an NFL coach, he's got a better chance to be an NFL coach than the superstar quarterback. Oh yes, because the superstar quarterback, not saying all of them, but I say a lot of them probably don't have to d- dig as deep into the wor- other workings that other players do. I think one exception would be, and I don't think he would go that route. Um, Peyton Manning. Uh, I told the story once before, and I, I'm going to probably butcher it, but the story goes like when he was going to get drafted, uh, I think it was uh, the Colts have the number one pick. Right. And the top two quarterbacks, or the top two picks for that matter, that draft, it was like a toss up. Right. Ryan Leaf right. and Peyton Manning. Mm-hmm. Right? We already know how that turned out. But, but uh, the Colts uh, had phone conversations with both of them. Uh, when they called Ryan Leaf, one of the questions they gave asked him was, uh, "So you're gonna if we picked you, you're gonna be a pretty rich man. And what, what what's the first thing you're gonna spend your money on? What are you gonna do?" And he says, "Well, you know, uh, I I didn't get here alone, so I'll have a lot of friends and family help me. So I'll probably, you know, pay for them. And I'll go to Hawaii together for a vacation and for a couple weeks. And that's oh, all right, okay, mediocre answer, fine." Uh, they asked Peyton Manning the same question. And he says, I don't know, I haven't even thought about that, but but can I ask you a question? And he, was, he kind of reversed it. Uh, I forget uh, the general manager. He's a Hall of Famer too. But anyways, he says, hey, listen, you know, I know you're thinking about drafting me number one, right? And and, and it's not definite one way or another, but I'd like to ask you a favor because even though you know my dad really well and you know my family and I think you trust us well enough, is there any chance I can get the playbook, the Colts playbook, 
just on the chance that you're going to be number one, be your pick, so that I can get ahead of the game and start studying the plays before right, right. as soon as po- as soon as possible, yes, yes. Yes. right? And if not, I understand. And if if you don't pick me, I'll just give you back the playbook and you know. Right. And I'm thinking that guy gets it. Yes. Like, I mean, he, he's known for his right, homework, right, right. for preparing, right? Yeah. So those are one of the exceptions. He, he's I'm sure all number one uh, quarterbacks prepare, right? But. Peyton Manning was legendary for his preparedness, Pre- preparation, yes, right? Yes. So I think he prepares like the guy who sits on the bench. Right. Like it's not always going to be there. My physical abilities aren't going to always be there. Right. I got to be smarter. That's why he's smart with the audibles right, and changing right. things up and signals and reading things and using his head. I think he would be one of those rare exceptions that if he chose to be a head coach or a, some co- kind of coach, he would excel. Right, exactly. That, I think one yes. of the exceptions. Yeah. yeah. All right, go ahead. No, no, yeah. I was just going to say that uh, – that 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 is hard to, um, you know. Like I said, uh, I think you learn more, like you know, from the other side. You know, everyone thinks it's winning that you're learning Losing. from, but it's, it's lo- do people get more wisdom from making mistakes well, and they recover remember, from? Remember, yeah. I tell that in our competition. I said, these guys are competing. I, I said you should have the mentality: win or lose, you have a little huddle afterwards. Yeah, right. Regardless, yeah. Right. because I said every game you play, something went wrong and something went right. Yeah. When you win, most of the time, most of the things went wrong, right? right? But there is something that went wrong. Yeah, yeah. self evaluation. And the same thing yeah. when you yeah. lose. I mean, you don't go extreme highs and extreme lows. When you lose, same thing. Yeah. Okay, we got our ass kicked, but guess what? Yeah, yeah. Something went right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and something well, went right. It comes down to like Just it, do that. how you yeah. how you learn from your failure is, is how you're gonna grow. Embrace and, it. And embrace it. Don't right. don't hide from it. Embrace it, kind of thing. Stepping but forward. um I, I say this because I, I want to transition to a question here. I wanna know, because we asked this a uh, couple of these questions here to all our guests is uh, how has a failure set you up for success later on in life, or do you have a favorite the biggest failure? Biggest failure in life? that had the biggest yeah. success. <laughs> well, uh, oh. well. <laughs> That's a good have one. I, huh? Yeah, I, I've had uh, I've had failures, um, but uh, the, the one thing that's kept me really a solid person is my family. Yeah, my family has kept. I've been married forty one years. Congratulations. So, yeah, so that's kind of like helped me to overcome my failures. Uh, the, the the failure that I had was when I was with the San Diego Chargers. You know, they didn't really negotiate to me honestly like that. I thought they should have compared to how they negotiated with some other players on the team. And I turned the contract down. I never played football again. I never played pro football again. I had some trials, but it, it never came about. But what I learned, I don't think I would have ever been where I'm at today. Okay, first of all, here, here's what I've done since, yeah. uh, since I've been here. Here's what I've done. Like I said, I worked with the United States Olympic team, right? I worked in I worked in Hollywood and the movie industry. I worked with some superstars like Rick James and Tina Marie. Mm-hmm. You know, I've 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 uh, 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 I've done some things like where would I be at? Would I would I've been a trainer today? Um, you know, uh, I I did the movie The Game Changer th- that recently I've done with uh, some some all plant based athletes. Um, I've done things like um, I'm getting involved with these companies now uh, for like CBD oil. I'm getting involved uh, um, uh, with, with companies like for this company called uh, Elmo Heat. I don't think I would have had the opportunity if I would have kept playing football because now I got to go branch off and do something else. Yeah, yeah. I had to go into other arenas, other industries of, of business. Yeah. You know, how do you put it this way? Who do you t- look at it like this? Professional football, professional sports. Now, how about working with Rick James and Tina Marie in the music business for a long time? That's, pro- you know how big that is? <laughs> That's two big, two major ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I went to the movie industry. How big is that? Yeah. Not not just with who I just, the, the game changer, but before them. Yeah. I, I was in the movie industry. So you were training actors and things like yes, that? Yes, okay. I was doing things like that. So I, I think it, I, I, I felt really bad when I made that mistake, Yeah. that biggest failure, because I turned down so much money. Yeah. Uh, I thought they should have given me more, and uh, I didn't get it. I go, oh, they, they rescinded my contract. Then they call me back and say, play for this amount. And I go, no. You know, so yeah. I went there. You're, you're proud, huh? Yeah, too pride, prideful. Yeah. You know, you got to be careful. Yeah, 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 that. Yeah. That, that, that's a major uh, issue with everyone. But I overcame that. But with my family, the stability of my family, they kept me together. Yeah. And made it to where I could progress and overcome that failure. You know, that was, and I'm, there's some other failures, but that was the biggest one that I'm aware of. But look, the industry, the I've been in every, ma- yeah, yeah, I've been in every major money making industry. And I even did corporate security. 
Yeah. But we're the corporation, you know? And so, yeah. Yes. I mean, and that's that's one of the things, how how we fall and rise to the top kind yes. of thing. It's it's what makes us and defines yes. us as, as who we are. And so one of those things, and that, that's why we ask the question, because all of us, we all fail at some point. And right. whether we admit it or not, that's what's going to define us as well. Yeah. And how we grow from that is how that's going to define us. And I have a lot of little failures, you know? Yeah, we all, yeah. Little, yeah, yeah. little failures, but man, you get one of them big ones. Oh my <laughs> gosh, look out. Oh yeah. It's like and, the walls are coming in because everybody's <laughs> coming at you like, why did you not take the money? Yeah. Why did you do this? Yeah. You're like, listen, it was my decision to do, you know, I felt like I was being used and this body can only take so much. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you're at the end of your career, you're like, hey, give me what I deserve, but don't, don't take me back a couple steps. Yeah, you know? yeah. Probably and, the, ball, yeah. and that's a yeah, tough thing. Ball. I mean, to have the mental awareness that you were at, like, knew that, oh, I cannot abuse this body right. uh, continuously this right. way and all that. And I mean, in the end, it was a su huge success yes. for you and, right. and going forward with a lot of the stuff you do. So, I mean, I, that that's why we ask because for people watching, they might be like struggling trying to figure out like, hey, what am I going to do with my life? Right. Where are we going to go? Or, hey, I just lost this job and all that. Right. That's the reality is like sometimes those kind of things that happen in life are what's going to – Here's the thing. Being a professional, here's what I got. Like I said, the fitness – it's what got me into all those areas I just nah. told you yeah. about. Yeah. It was me being a professional athlete and being concerned about my health and, and fitness, my yeah. wellness. You know, all this stuff right. is got what got me to where I'm at today. So along that line, let's talk a little bit about this plant-based diet. I'm yeah. I'm a meat eater. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, I'm, yes. I am not going to give up my <laughs> ribs Among and other stuff things. like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but let me – let's no. talk about no. this because – uh, my background a little bit when we talk um, uh, about stuff, I came from the pet world doing a lot of production. And okay. We've talked to a lot of different people about the health of pets and right. plant-based diets and right, things like right. that. There's no difference for me yeah. when it comes to humans, pets, and things like that. Right. So I'm aware of a lot of these things out there. I still choose to eat meat, though. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But your plant-based diet, you, you said, what, 10 years now? 13 years. 13 years. 13 Thank you. Years. Okay. years, plant-based. And so... Do, what, what? Here's why I got into plant based. Okay. My digestive system just wasn't functioning properly. Okay. But I've always had problems eating beef. Okay. Mm. You know, and I've always liked it, but I never could really go to sleep or lay down after I've eaten it. You know, uh, even if I were to eat it like right now, I mean, look how early this is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to bed tonight between nine and ten. Uh, You're still gonna feel effects. I would still feel it, and I just got discouraged one day and said, I don't like. Sitting up in the bed looking at the ceiling. Yeah, now you know, I every that. every night, and I hear my wife snoring. Yeah, I'm like she's snoring. She's everything's working out for her. Yeah, but it's not okay. working out for me. You know, so my body doesn't get a chance to recover. So that's what made me uh, go plant based. And I went plant based. Guess what? When it in was one unpopular. Day, <laughs> right away. Yeah. Okay. Because I had already given up pork and I'd already given up beef. Okay. The only thing I had to give up was turkey, chicken, and fish. So the big ones I had already given up because right. those are the ones that I was struggling with the most. Yeah, yeah. And I gave up pork first. And I went to college, to Cal State Fullerton. And at 20, they started saying stuff like, you got to go to a bland diet, you know, because I was having all kind of problems, stomach problems, all yeah, kind of yeah, things. Yeah. I had it in college. So okay. as, as I got older, this plant-based uh, concept started coming out. And that's what, uh, you know, stimulated my, my thought process and to say, hey, I got to just go plant-based. You know, my wife said, what are you doing? I'm going plant based. No, you're not going. Yes, I am. How, how does she feel about it? Is I was going to say plant based. No, she's not plant based. Okay, okay. Right. So does that make it difficult for her or you or both? <laughs> well, here's, here's I always what, ask that about veggies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the deal. It made it difficult up until recently. Uh huh. Here's why it's not difficult now. I hired a cook. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to get a cook. I had, well, I had, I had I mean, to get a cook. So it's that's, easy that's now. one it's way easy. to do it. So up, yeah. to that, up to that point, she was. Uh, yeah, because she's cooking three meals a day, uh, three yeah. different kinds of meals. We got the grandchildren. Yeah. We got my meal, and then for what, whatever she wants. <laughs> she wants. Yeah. She, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like your own but, meal. Yeah, but she because she, she's not eating what you're eating. No, she's not eating what I'm eating. Okay. No. <laughs> you know, to be, to be plant based is, is very, very challenging. Yeah, it's not yeah. something for everyone. Sure. I have nothing against meat. Yeah. I have nothing against uh, uh, the people that do eat meat. Or I'm not. I'm not doing plant based because animals Ye or politics. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You, you're coming uh, from a health uh, standpoint health, yeah, and what own. makes you feel better yes. at, at you know internally, it, externally, yeah, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that's that's totally fine. And again, I got nothing against people who are vegan or anything along that line. I don't trust them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I just uh, I I'm a, a huge fan of uh, smoked barbecues and. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, well, I used to like that stuff too. But, yeah, yeah, you, but you yeah. had to make sure. Yeah. So, like, that's one of the things uh, that's killed me is is 
I suffer from migraines and right. like people have always said, Hey, watch your diet. Like, and I go, man, yeah. don't make me choose <laughs> on yeah, stuff. Yeah, I really yeah, want some yeah. of this stuff. So because what about, I know we're talking about Z- CBD oils. Yeah, CBD oil, yeah. What yeah. About maybe something that benefits with, uh, for your migraines maybe. Yeah, CBD. So I yeah. have tried a couple different things actually, and I'm not seeing any results. And so my, my thing is, I don't know if I'm educated right and enough on it. where you get it, it from and, is yeah, big yeah and that's yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. I also don't know blends properly yeah. and things like that. I've talked to some people. The, all the CBD stuff that I've come from is actually from the pet world. It's right. really funny. We've right. talked to a lot of experts. We've done a lot of different like sure. video stuff and right. things like that around it. But for myself, I, I'm I'm still such a novice on what it is. But I, I one of the things I actually was going to get into with the CBDs and things like that, I know there's a lot of controversy with NFL nowadays with marijuana and CBDs and things like that. Mm. But I take it you're, you're a proponent for the CBD oils and how they yes, can yes, help. Yes. How, how do we think we get more people on board with a lot of this stuff? Well, I, I think it's like what you said, you know, uh, through trial and error, through experience, understanding. Yeah, I think the most important thing is uh, you got to uh, understand your absorb- absorption rate. Okay. How much of it do you actually absorb? Like yeah. the country, the, the company, For anything, supplements, yeah, vitamins, yeah, 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 anything. Yeah, like the company I work with is Swiss uh, CBD. Okay. They have a really high uh, uh, absorption rate of 100%. Um, and they use, uh, you know, half water, half uh, half uh, oil or whatever. Um but the thing is, I feel good on CBD oil. You mm-hmm. know, uh, I think it helps me to focus, helps me to relax, clears me, clears me of anxiety, uh, helps me. I think it gives you energy. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing I like. If I take CBD oil the night before I go to bed in the morning, good, I'm ready to go. Yeah. But like I that's said, I like once it. I start moving, yeah. Once I start moving, I'm ready to go. Because first thing I look at, I got early mornings. First of all, I'm 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 starting tomorrow morning. I leave the house between uh. Probably around four, four, four between four fifteen and four forty five. I'm okay. leaving the house and driving to my to my first client. Uh, I think if it weren't for the CBD oil, I wouldn't be as focused. I, I, it would I, take I, you a while to kind of gear yeah, up. Yes, yeah. yes, and I wouldn't uh, recover as fast, you know, from all those uh, early mornings and stand up late. Like yeah. I never say I'm going to go to bed at ten. Yep. How I don't know. Yeah. Even though I got a four thirty morning. And what are you gonna go on bed and just like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You know, I go that, to bed. That was this morning. last night. I'm like, okay, I gotta be up early. We're yeah. filming tomorrow. Yeah. Great. I'm gonna go to bed early. No, nope. four, four o'clock go rolled in and I go, crap, I need to get to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But but the the C B D oil, uh, you know, like I said, uh, the energy, the anxiety, uh the the focus, the recovery, you know, how 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 you how you feel overall. Yeah. You know, and I think what you're missing is the absorption rate. Okay. Like most of the C B Ds only absorb like 16% of what they say that's in there. Okay. So if it's 25 milligrams, so 16% of 25 milligrams, that's what you're going to be absorbing. Yeah, you very, know? very and, little. Where would you find these absor- absorption rates? Do a lot of the reputable companies actually promote that, or you have to dig for it? You have to dig for it. Like the company that I'm with right now, Swiss CBD, they're going to be showing that. You know, yeah. I'm going to be doing, going to a seminar uh, uh, tonight uh, on that, You know how, uh, how they compare what we have to to other to competitors yeah other, like other competitors but you know but are they are they are they uh, what forms are they liquid powder pe- and yeah tincture up under your tongue the, the, the tinctures, okay so the tinctures okay the tinctures they okay. put it up under your tongue and then they got the uh the the, the cream the, okay uh, the, the cream that you can put yeah, on because because the form of, of whatever it is supplements whatnot it, the form of it affects absorption rates yes. like if you're talking about just say vitamin d right you yeah. know if you had it in a powder uh, uh, a liquid or a, a capsule, right. the liquid would be the best right. to get Always. the higher and then powder and then capsule. Yes, right? yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, so, you know. Uh, yeah, because my, I, like, I had a really bad migraine, lasted about three days, and I had a buddy um, who was a uh, cancer survivor who had his medical card, and this was, she's mm. almost eight years ago, roughly, right. maybe, and he brought me a Jolly Rancher. Right. And I'm Those thinking, uh, yeah, I'm like, I don't know how this is going to do. And I've never, I, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't right. do any you kind don't of, the whole... yeah, 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 no. So what I did is I, I was at you home I can't remember. and I, I don't, I don't think I shared this, but I, I, I was, I went home early from my previous job, passed out for about maybe three hours, woke right. back up and I, I told my parents, I'm like, Hey, the, I, a friend of mine gave me this. If I act weird or anything, this is what I'm on. I was yeah. being, being aware. And I'm like, I'm only going to take half of it. So I cut cut it in half, and I, like, sucked on it for maybe 20 minutes. And then I'm like, oh, this tastes awful. So I just yeah. threw it away. Yeah. 
but I went to bed and woke up, like you said, energized yes. that next morning. Like yeah. I was able so to a relax. Deep, a deeper sleep. Uh, yeah. A yeah, deeper and, sleep. Yeah. But I, I, I have not been able to get that same results. Like it didn't – I didn't feel any instant relief or anything like right. that from the migraine. But I did go to bed pretty quickly and it was nice. But I, I've tried Jolly Ranchers along the same lines. I've tried different I, I got, chewables and things like that. From, yeah. uh, well, it's a different company, but yeah. uh, Pure Can- Canna. Right. Yeah. And they have gummy bears too. And, and so uh, – I'll yeah, some, I'll bring some in I tried some like gummies when we went to Vegas for Shot Show. I bought some uh, that were like a, a hundred to one ratio, yeah. and it was more CBD and yeah. one like uh, percentage so of the a THC. A lot of brands are more but, coming out. Yeah, but you have I just kind of overlooked overall reviews as far as quality of where they're sourcing it yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's usually like uh, there's always up and comings, but the, there's like two or three, three or four that are actually always. In the top four, yeah, yeah, when because working in the pet industry, I eat a lot of dog treats because, like, we, we te- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we test it because a lot of the things I'm like, if, if I'm gonna be comfortable eating yeah. this, I'll give it to yeah, my yeah, dog, yes, yeah. really, so yeah, a hundred percent. Because a lot of the stuff, okay, so, so if I got a, if I got a can of dog food, like a can of dog food, like the like the, the stewy, whatever, you would eat it. So he, there's certain brands I would, um, and there, what's really funny wait, 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 is time out. You say certain brands, knowing that some <laughs> certain brands taste better. No, knowing or like the quality know? of the brand. The qu- yeah, and the and so there's actually okay. what's really funny. There's a there's a food company that we deal with, and we've done BS some video stuff. No, know. they yeah. so they use like a whole chicken inside of the can, and like you pop it open, there's a little tiny chicken inside. But like she's like, yeah, like when we're at events and everything, and I don't get time, like I'll open a can of food because yeah. she knows a hundred percent what's in that dog food. Yeah. Yeah. And all it is, it is ta- I'm not saying it's going to hurt you. No. So, or, well, so what it tastes like, it's, it's very light on salt. That's yeah. really, it's yeah, low it's salt important. or yeah, low sugar because yeah. that's what it, so it's a very bland kind of right. diet, but it's, it's rice, it's peas, it's chicken. Like, okay, just time, time to ask a question. <laughs> so what do you, now what do you, where can you get a good sucker? I like suckers. Oh, I went to the city. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah, went yeah. to the CBD clinic down in uh, mm. the CBD uh, convention down in San Diego, uh-huh. and I came across a couple good suckers. But I forgot the name of the company. <laughs> uh, they're candy. Do you just suck on them? They yeah, yeah. Have, yeah. I, I gotta what, check what the get website. Some good I got to check Pure Canada if they had it because they were adding some stuff. They also have those little things you stick in the you know. Your yeah. If anybody like out there is watching and knows where we can get good CBD uh, lollipop suckers, yeah, kind lollipop, of thing, let us know. Comment down below for sure. Yeah, they're really um, good. Yeah, because I I've had a dog treat that's been with CBD oil yeah. from one of our things. We've had like supplements because we've right. dealt with a bunch of different supplement companies for dogs. Right. The funny part is I care more about my dog and give her supplements and better food than what yes. I give yes. myself, yes. kind of thing. Yes. And that's so, true. Yep. Um, you yeah, my wife's like that. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I'll care for that dog a lot more. And I don't know, I don't know what it is if it's the the that they can't care for themselves you're that like, I feel you're I like need the to. Royal food get, tester. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> The, one of the things – so we used to do a show called uh, Cooking for Pets, and um, at the the gimmick that we had is we would eat the food at the very end because right. it, it was bland. Like I think my favorite was we did these burger slider things right. for our dogs. I, I was like uh, chowing sliders. down. I'm like, yeah. it's just beef. And yeah. I'm like, there's like very little flavor added to it, right. but it, it's like we had flax seeds or something added to it and some other – but I was eating that and like – like that's really good. I'm gonna go yeah, for another yeah. one. But some of them, I bite them. Like, oh, this is dry. This is just. But, but some people really do that in real life. Some yeah. people really eat uh, animal food. Yeah. That if they can't afford something, they, they really do eat yeah. that. Really. Well, do. well. Um, well it's not gonna hurt them. No, no. It'll get nutrients. Yeah. There's a company, um, uh, Three Dog Bakery. They're based here in Newport Beach area. They have an Oreo cookie for dogs. Their biggest clients, though. Are actually diabetics. Really? Yeah. No sugar? And there's no sugar. Wow. It's very light. Wow. And and so I, what's funny is we'll go to a convention and sh- she would bring us a, a pack of these yeah. cookies. They're damn good. Yeah, like yeah, and, yeah. and no like sugar, and they're they're healthy. Like, and it's funny that she has people come in that is right, like right. just diabetic and getting that cookie. But uh, it, I mean, we go go on the, on this tangent with it. But it, it is funny because. There are yes on a certain degree of people that are, that can't afford food and they right. do go to the dog food route, but yeah, survival. yeah survival. survival. Yeah, that's important. But I mean, I, I look at it in, a, in the same sense. There, I've gotten better with reading labels. I've gotten better of like being aware of what I'm putting in my body. I'm getting older. And I got to make sure to that those too. Kind of yeah. things. And they hide things now. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. So quantities. When we when we get into making the dog food side of things, I'm like, hey, I want to know what my dog. The my first dog that we had, she died. Or, or sorry, he died. Uh, from a brain tumor and we didn't really know the results and so he was about eight years old he was a a siberian husky but i realized i was killing my dog 
Uh, like we were, t- we were told some of these brands out there, yeah. like we're well giving, uh, giving, uh, like a three liter of soda to my dog with a yeah. little treat. And I go, Whoa, with a little treat. uh, with the chaser. uh, yeah, it is, is a little, uh, uh, like pepperoni kind of looking thing. And I'm like, Holy crap. Well, I didn't realize I was killing my dog by like just overloading with these things. We so. don't realize a lot of things. I mean, uh, on the human side, I mean, you just like, I get, you know, a lot of people are. Uh, talk about bread being like the devil and everything. Right. You know, obviously, certain breads are probably better than the others right, right, for right. carbs and whatnot. Right. But they say in general, how we grow our wheat here is a lot different than they grow it in Europe. Like yeah. Europe, high bread here and go to Europe, completely different. And their bread is actually better for you than what we produce here based but, on chemicals. and. Put it this way. The wheat bread here cannot touch the wheat bread in North Africa. Yeah. Mm, I can only imagine. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the wheat bread in North Africa is so good, and you don't gain weight from it. Yeah, and you don't feel sluggish. Yeah, because yeah. we we so it's good carbs. We, yeah, it's really good. Cause I, I told my wife, I go, Kathy, the the wheat over there. They talk about wheat is bad, but how come that wheat over there is so yeah, good? So that's what yeah. I hear. Like, and the wheat even in here France, is bad. Yeah. yeah, even in France, the wheat is good. No, yeah. When I go to Tunisia, the wheat is good, and yeah. it, and they got the bread. They have this really hard bread. Yeah. yeah you know, y'all mean it's good, dude. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so addicting, but you don't get fat yeah. from it. No, and I work out harder I mean, over the, here than I do over I there. I mean, the French, they just drink, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. generally, <laughs> bread and cheese and wine, yeah. and, and a lot of them as a society are, yeah. are, are not over obese. Yeah, well, different in all, oh, nobody, too, nobody in France is, you go to France, everyone is like, drinking, you and I. They're drinking wine yeah. with sugar yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. cheese. They're not big people over there. Yeah. You know, they maybe they're small, small they've, been, they've been on a keto diet forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that comes down to a little bit of, like, how we've mass-marketed, uh, like, our industrial age of, like, food and distribu- distribution right. and stuff like that. Because, I, I mean, you go to other countries, they're not producing as much, like, mass marketed like right. goodies and treats and these kind of stuff it's very limited that's what you're getting i remember when i was in croatia like there was no real big grocery store it right. was all small little oh places like and in france yeah and, and so you like you had the corner little like uh good. deli or the corner little could like, you see them uh could you yeah. actually see them when you walk down the street because in france you don't even know where they are oh no you're yeah, walking yeah. right down the street and <laughs> you go that's a grocery store and you go oh you can see every grocery store here i think it was States. just the only reason i knew it was a, like a little grocery store is because i was in there like every day like yes. buying something right. just because of like we were there for two weeks the neighborhood knows but, where it is yeah the yeah, neighborhood yeah, knows yeah, where it is exactly and it was and it's like we were told by the locals like here you go kind of thing and so I mean, they must have loved us at that place because we were bringing them so much extra business. And, yeah. like, we were Americans, so we didn't know, like, yes. here, like people don't go in and buy $20, $30 worth of yeah. food at a day. Right, right. Like, they're like, oh, my God, why are you buying so much stuff? Because that was the one thing. Like, someone goes in and just gets this little bit or that, and I'm like, I'm clearing their shelves on yeah, certain yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You see, that's <laughs> the thing like, I yeah. learned in France. I never knew where the stores were. Yeah. The family I was with, because I, I, I would go there for like two, three, four months at a time. Yeah. And the family would take me to a store. Go, well, that's the store? You can't even tell. <laughs> they don't even have the big signs out like us. Yeah. I mean, you can see every one of our stores. Even yeah. the mom and pop stores here, you can see. Yeah, but yeah. But over there, you can't, you can't see it. It is, it is definitely a culture shock stepping outside of this country and and going to another country and seeing how a lot of things are. Like, my first time, I was in Montenegro, uh, and the, I was... 21 i think when i actually traveled out of the uh, out of the country i just graduated college and i got hired to do a reality show out there and it was an eye-opener yeah like it was a crazy (laughs) eye-opener to get out into i'm like okay this is cool i loved it i loved the experience i loved the culture i loved the people i wish i was there not to film uh, a bunch of american soccer players but it it was one of those things the the coffee that is the one thing i have never gotten any better anywhere else stronger? is the coffee over there it yeah. wasn't that it was stronger it was just it was richer in the in flavor it had so much more depth to it i wonder and if a lot of this ties into also the bread obviously we know you know we put a lot of extra things into the bread here but maybe the soil yes or how they grow things well right? i i think it's also that like the nutrients aren't lost by making thousands and thousands and thousands of batches a day because right. Like my dad works for a, a, a juice company here, and like I see, like we've gotten tours of how they make it. They're making these giant vats of yeah. of juice that goes in that gets mass distributed across the country. They have, I think it's five, 
uh, warehouses that do this across the country for them now. Um, but it, it's it's one of those things. I'm like, when you look at it, it's like, how do I know that the actual like little ten milligrams of vitamin D that right. says is in there is actually getting yeah. into the bottle yeah. that I'm or drinking? That, uh, yeah. And that, and so how much of the nutrients is burnt off from what they're actually putting in? Ooh. And That's so, serious. yeah, because uh, uh, I mean, you get you have pasteurization, you have all these things that they have to do for regulation for our safety and right. their safety as well. But like, do we actually get the full vitamin D, yeah. vitamin A, yeah. vitamin? Oh, like, you ever see the movie Soylent Green? No. Have you, remember, do you remember that? It's like no. in the seventies. Soylent Green, Charlton Heston. Okay. I guess you could say I don't want to say sci-fi, maybe horror movie. It's called Soylent Green. And it was like some, it was, it was something they ate or drank that it was like sweeping the, 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 the country. Like you drink this, you'll be smarter, this, whatever, whatever. And there was like great effects. And all of a sudden they realized people were dying or it was like it had to reverse. Like it was like a Twilight Zone. Yeah. Kind of yeah. It's in the soil, soil and green. Don't, you know, because it was <laughs> this mass campaign. It was so popular. And all of a sudden it population got, control. Yeah. The government yeah. was involved in it. Really? Right. And so yeah. I was thinking. Well, how do we really know what's? It, uh, I mean, we don't. We yeah. don't, and that's that's a struggle. And I, I'm not knocking for free, for anybody out there because the reality is, is we live in such a fast paced society We're here in, in the yeah. United States. We are, and there are things where we just go. You know what? We need this to survive. There are plenty of times. I mean, there's probably plenty of times you've stopped at a, a, a fast food place to maybe, hey, I need something just to get by yeah, with yeah. a thing because we're in a rush. We're constantly. Yeah. And uh, do we make the healthiest choices sometimes? No. <laughs> See, my, my whole thing is this. Being plant-based, it, you can never, ever go to a fast food place. Yeah. So you, Everything is like you have to go where they actually can cook it and you can – Explain to them how you want it prepared. <laughs> yeah. Good no, luck. really, because yeah, good luck. Because yeah. I, I was over in France one day, I could have swore, I said, hey, look, I want beans, white beans, right? Mm -hmm. uh, navy beans, what they call white beans. Man, I could have swore I tasted beef in them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so, well, maybe beef broth or something. Well, you know, so that you can, broth, yeah. that's it, that's the thing. Yeah. There's certain places, and even the same but sense. They said no. They said it wasn't. And I'm like, really? Yeah, it tastes like it yeah. tastes. So there it is that thing where like certain people are like, oh yeah, you want plant based here? I'm gonna make you kale, but then yeah. they they fry it in pig fat. Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing, and you're like, oh, I didn't realize the oil I was using. Yes. It was it goes against your choice yes. of thing. Exactly, and, so, and that's true. Yeah, that's how they get you. And they're doing it by mistake, I think. Yeah, it's not intentionally. I yeah, think that's what happened to me once. So let me, let me ask you this, and I know you don't, you're not, you're not a, 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 a vegan because of uh, ethical reasons, right? right it's right. about health, right? Uh, so what about broth? How do you feel about broth? Then a bone broth is a big deal now. Yeah, I, I don't do bone broth, but I, I, I do. I think we talked about the gym. You were asking if they had a vegetarian. Yeah, version. yeah, yeah, vegan broth. They, I, I know because <laughs> there's, there's chicken <laughs> broth, yeah. there's it's, beef broth. Right, yes. I imagine you could potentially but vegetable boil vegetables. Yeah, so there I guess is my like question vegetable is, broth. if it's not an ethical or moral reason, could you see what would – is it because there's uh, – how do I put this? It's not because they wouldn't taste good and there's benefits in it. What what uh, goes against your vegan diet if it was just broth, though it was beef, you know, a, you know, a bone broth uh, from an animal? I mean, what goes against my diet because they had that in there? Because yeah, how how, did, how would that affect me? Because it's not like you're eating a steak before dinner. Right, right. But I mean, is it possible if there's the 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 good part of the meat, maybe sourced out of the bone portion of it, yeah. that 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 will give you benefits and not any side effects? I'm not I'm not really sure how okay. that would affect right. me because I haven't really you haven't tried. Okay, no, okay, yeah. but like I said, over when I was over there in France, I could have swore yeah. they had some <laughs> sense of yeah, I, yeah. I, I tasted it. Yeah, I really like like once like once I was training a kid, and his mother, uh, you know, made me peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay, always made them. Yeah, you know, uh, recently within the last two or three years. So I said, I bet it, and I go, hey, ask your mother what's in the bread. Yeah, I go, I think I taste milk in the bread. Uh. I go, we called her up. I go, what's in the bread? I go, could you read the label off for me, please? Sure, it has to be right. Yeah, oh, it was milk. Oh yeah, you could once you become plant based. You, you can tell. So no, yeah. did, did it taste bad? I, I mean, I guess what I'm saying, if you had the broth, you could taste it. Okay, oh, yeah, you, you taste it right away. But does it taste bad, or does it, does it sit with you well? Well, uh, first of all, once you don't you, you don't know. I was going to even done yeah, broth. Yeah, yeah, but, just... but, but, but once when I tasted it in the beans, yeah, I ate all the beans. Yeah, but you know, it didn't really bother me. But if I would have been eating it consistently, you think so? it probably would have. Okay. Right, well, right, and, right. and what happened with the with the bread was. Um, I just I ate the sandwich because you know she made it and the kids brought it to me to my place to train, uh, where we were training at. 
But my whole thing is with her is, you know, please from now on, if you're gonna make me a a, a, a milk sandwich, just don't make me one. Because uh, you know, I don't want to throw you, I don't want to throw your bread, your sandwich <laughs> yeah, yeah, away, yeah, yeah, your, yeah. your, your, your seeds respect. that I'm yeah, throwing yeah, yeah. away. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, yeah. I don't I don't want to keep sending you back negative messages. Yeah. Even when even the lady's cooking right now, if I even t- I go I go, where'd you sweeten those uh, brownies with? <laughs> she says brown sugar. I go, okay, don't use no more brown sugar. Yeah. Where are you sweeten the browns with? Agave. I go, that's okay. Then I go, where are you sweeten the browns with? I go, this time use dates. Okay. Because she, 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 she bought them today. Yeah. The lady that was there today. That's the cook. Yeah, okay. She's from Cuba. Okay. She's been cooking for me for about two months now. Uh, but I had another lady who was a Mexican lady, Hispanic lady. Oh, my gosh. She was a badass. Oh. <laughs> she's an older woman, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, she was making... With, with Mexican food, you got more opportunities with Mexican food than any other food. Yeah, you can sure. make you can make vegan enchiladas, vegan tamales, vegan tostadas, vegan tacos. You can go all the way down the line. Cheese doesn't fit with you guys, though, right? No, we don't eat cheese. So, the Mexicans oh. have the best choices of, of plant-based foods. Oh, the opportunities. Yeah, but you don't yeah, have to, yeah, to make them. You can like do more of the food. big things with enchiladas is cheese. I know so that. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, do you, do you, she doesn't put cheese on them. So I'm trying to picture well, her without cheese. That's not an enchilada. Yeah, yeah but, but you got you got, you got <laughs> I sauce. I will argue hey, this let, point let, here. Let, 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 listen, <laughs> listen. listen. She was putting, she was putting green beans in there. Yeah. Black yeah. olives. Oh, yeah. Black beans. So we'll mix it on, I guess we'll mix it into all. <laughs> the, the red sauce, I mean, makes it enchilada. The sauce. Don't be vegan, Shaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said the donut king over here. So don't, you know. Hey, hey, man, I love my donuts. Hey, but, li- but listen to this. You're talking about donuts, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Go up to Vegas. I forget the name of the place, but every time I go up to Vegas, there's a vegan donut shop in oh, Vegas, geez. right? Yeah, so every only time in I Vegas. Go, <laughs> only in Vegas, right? And, uh, the, and it's uh, Vietnamese, I think, or, or Chinese. Mm. First, when I go there, I buy at least 12 bucks or more because I'm going to bring them back home. Because, you, <laughs> you, you, like, you ask... Uh, uh, um, so, so, so seriously, do they, do they taste... Let's put it this way. Not, not necessarily as good as a regular donut, but good. Pretty close. So, so okay. okay. Pretty close. Hey, Sonny, really, really close. Seriously, come on. Seriously, well, you can yeah, tell yeah. me. So, no wait, one's wait, listening. On, you can on, tell hold me. Hold on, hold on. Because yeah. every time I hear that, I was like, oh, come on. So, right. so, I, I'm well, going to get the name of that place. Okay. Here, here's here's, here's, here's go, always go, the go, argument that. What is it called? Uh, Matt, Happy Cow. Okay. Happy okay. Cow is all, all plant-based. Okay. I think all restaurants. Like one of the things that like – for so for people who have gone vegan or have gone to plant based diets or any of, the, of those kind of things, they have been on it such a, a, a long enough time that the the taste they're kind of used to. Yeah, and right, so right. like Earth's and and, and so levels. like when was the last time you actually had a real donut? And then can actually say <laughs> that it's actually yeah, sure, pretty right? close. Because if you've been yeah, plant-based for 13 years and yeah, haven't yeah, had yeah, a donut in 13 yeah, 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 years, then you don't, you don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so what are you saying? Like donut technology has improved in 13 no, years? No, it hasn't. Not that <laughs> yeah. it hasn't improved. I'm just saying. Like that taste donuts that you remember 13 years ago might not be exactly yeah. what you're used uh, to yeah. with yeah. that vegan yeah. and I, and donut. I'm, and I'm not sure how they really – I'm not sure they, I really don't question her when I go in there. Yeah, yeah. My family. I just know we go in there. We go. Uh, can we look them up on Happy Cow? Yeah, yeah. Do you know the Happy Cow app? No, you gotta get the Happy Cow okay. app and look it up. And so that's just like a vegan based kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, okay, you can Great look name. up vegan. Yeah, vegan yeah, 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 smart. And uh, you go in there, and she tells you what shelf uh, that that uh, is vegan. She gets two shelves. They're all vegan. You know, and they got bear claws, and those are so good. <laughs> but, vegan, donut, but here's the thing: in pro football, uh huh. Every Friday, no, every Saturday morning. What are we having? Donuts. Donuts. Oh, yeah. Donuts and coffee. The rookies got to bring them in. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. eaten donuts for so long, but you got a good point. I really don't know, but it seemed like they taste so, so l- pretty l- close. Let me ask yeah. you this. Okay, yeah. on a vegan donut, right? Now, obviously, yeah. there's probably different ways to make vegan donuts, but let's yeah. say this place in particular. Okay, so it's it's vegan. If, if it checks all the boxes for a vegan diet, is it still a donut? Right. Is it a, is is it something that that moves your needle in a positive way, or or uh, you're st- still you know got to pay for that donut, or is this n- yeah, neutral? Yeah, as far as like yeah. a like a training ben- side of things, to yeah. Your body, that's like, what I'm going to tell you. Like bad oh, elements. <laughs> can, can there be bad vegan <laughs> yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Put this way, if I'm bad. bringing those bad boys home, <laughs> I guarantee you one thing, it don't affect you in a, a negative way. Okay. I think the, I think the lower calories, and if you were. I'm not sure what kind of oil they make them in. Yeah. But if you were eating a regular uh, donut, I think that would be the difference. Okay. It's what oil they put in it. Are they using butter? Because you remember all the actual dough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because all sweets come with oil and butter. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and so you got to figure out 
I mean, th- yeah, there is peanut based o- like oils out there, so right. I mean that's totally fine. That would yeah. be fall under a plant based right. oil. I mean, there's vegetable oils and things like right. that, but I for I know most of the frying that I do, I use a peanut based right. oil. Um, most of like pastry frying that I do, I'd use a peanut based oil as well, kind of thing. So. I, I imagine it has to be like the lack of milk inside of it would make it that vegan uh, stuff, right. and then the lack of eggs. So you right. have to find those substitutes. But, but what's remaining? And does, I is guess it, is butter. It harmful for your if it, if anything harmful for your body. It, um, Maybe not like really bad, but I mean it's, it's definitely not benefiting you. Yeah, right. right. I mean, uh, if, if, I imagine in your industry, what you eat either hurts you or benefits you. Yeah. I, what I do is I always question them. Except for this, these people, they don't speak. Uh, very good English, so it's uh-huh. you know hard to dig into their sure. brains. But the people out here, um, you know, you can ask them, and I've and I've always asked, like well, like one place, uh, cinnamon, um, cinnamon something over here in Brea. What a cinnamon like a, a regular donut called. place? It, it, they sell vegan donuts there. Okay, cinnamon I, bun? No, not cinnamon. No, no. no. Just, no. be smart. If they yeah, do yeah, right. It's called cinnamon some cinnamon okay. cinnamon holic cinnamon. Oh, uh, okay. I know you're so about. like a little like one off place kind Holic. of thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. But my thing with them is they put soy in theirs. Oh, okay. And I don't like soy. Okay. I don't want soy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, you know, I try. Like I, I had a big brownie, say four four by four inches. Hmm. Guess how long that lasts. You said you liked brownies, yeah. so I'm thinking it didn't last long. <laughs> no, that lasted a week. Oh, really? Yes. Why? Why? Because I don't eat. When I eat a brownie, when you found out there was soy in it, no, no, I just don't eat it. When I went back there to go buy some more, someone gave it to me on my birthday. I just don't go. Things I like, I said earlier, don't eat a lot of it. If you like it, don't eat a lot of it. So I eat pieces at a time. I, sh- I make it last. Oh. Like I, See, like I got bu- so hard for me yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah, that's not hard for me because I'm like, first of all, I, I, I'm the billboard. Yeah, yeah, I'm, no, I, mean, I get that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. the billboard. You know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm 62 years old, and we're 170. Two to 175. I took my percentage of body fat last Saturday. It was 7.9. So I'm, I'm really doing good. <laughs> yeah. I'm really doing really well. I'd say so. Yeah. With having 7%, uh, just up under 8% body fat. Uh, so I don't want to do things that I've worked so hard to achieve to lose. Sure. You okay. know, I want to keep yeah. it. I know I like brownies. Yeah, yeah. I need a whole bunch of brownies. But I know... They're dangerous. Oh yeah, you, dangerous. you can't tell me. Hey, hey, funny. You can't tell me that a plant-based guy is cannot get fat. No, no, hey, well, a plant-based yeah. guy oh, yeah. can gain weight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there, I, I know plant-based people that eat macaroni and and the fake cheese. Uh huh. You know, I'm I'm not going there. Yeah. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm gonna eat macaroni and fake cheese. And you know, macaroni is gonna yeah. eventually add up. Yeah, you yeah. Know, they're eating <laughs> things like that. You eating a bunch. You eating a bunch of cakes. You, you know? run. You running a triathlon tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you don't. You don't eat that stuff. Yeah. There's certain vegan foods that get you fat too. Oh yeah. There's a lot well, of anything, and also anything in like excess. I, I, like yeah. If 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 I don't know, apples were good for you. Like right. you know, you don't eat a, a, a couple bags of apples. Right. Right. You overdo anything. Yes. Is, is with moderation. Moderation. When well, you're talking about cake, you hear all the time uh, people like especially uh, after New Year's you know, resolutions. I'm going to give up this and give right. that. And, and uh, maybe it's like, okay, maybe it's donuts, right? right. So I'm going to give up donuts, right. right? And that's all they think about is donuts. Yeah. Right. They, they see it in a commercial. <laughs> they think about it, They see a smell of donut, whatever, right? And what happens when they finally cave in, they don't just eat part of a donut <laughs> yeah. or one donut. Right. They'll it's eat a whole f- yeah. fucking dozen yeah, of donuts. Yeah, yes. they, they obsess yes. about what they're giving up. Yes, yes. My thing is, like at least my family knows this, is like I have a sweet tooth, and yeah, I shouldn't be eating. I get that. Yeah. But I don't like obsess about it. Like, like I might want you know, a couple slices of pie, then I'm good. It right. yeah. doesn't mean I want to buy a pie and have it sit in my refrigerator all the right, time. Right. Yeah. I just I got that on my system. Yeah. I'm not like obsessing like I haven't had pie in like 15 years. You know, like yeah. now I'm going to be obsessing about pie, and then what's, what's going to happen? Am I going to stop at one or two slices? I yeah. might eat the whole damn pie. Yes, yes. Just I wanna say, like, chill. People get so like... Stop. The the last time I had donuts was probably about a month ago. I came home after leaving here, Krispy Kremes. I'm like, you know what? I feel like getting Krispy Kreme yeah. donuts. I know people are going to be over tomorrow. They'll have something in the morning. I'll grab a Krispy Kreme. But, uh, and the previous before that is when we have like a morning session on the weekends, I will actually go and like buy donuts for everybody here because it's like most of the time the guys are not going to stop and get themselves something to munch on. Right. And if we got it, if if we've got like members days, I usually get a couple dozen donuts for those. Yeah, we have an event. And so it's like one of those things. That's when I have a donut. It's just, 
I don't know. That just goes back to like my well, again, that's not, uh, younger that's not years. Like you know, some people. I'm guessing have donuts like every day. Every day. Yeah. Oh yeah, like there are there are people. Or, with coffee. Or, right. Yeah, my yeah, exactly. Da- yeah. My dad for a while would he, he was like would go to the local d- corner donut shop before he jumped on the freeway. Dad and a coffee. The people knew him, and then he realized, oh shit, this is yeah. killing me. I, yeah. I can't have this. Yeah. This is a treat, and that that's where like you've come to realize. Let me ask you two things, Lou. Uh, thoughts on fasting, okay, and caffeine slash coffee. Right. I think uh, when I played in the NFL, I was drinking a lot of coffee. I still like coffee. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you all I, the goodies or honey or nothing? No, I, I drink it just straight black. Okay. okay. Straight, straight black. Like matter of fact, the lady that cooks for me, mm-hmm. they own a coffee company. They did. Whoa. They did a hundred and sixty something million pounds of coffee. Wow. Wow. They got a big company. Like a, like a, That's like a, crap a coffee order. delivery service. They or break it down. A they got, they, oh, dude, they, I, I, it's big. They want me to come up there and check What's it the out. What's the name of it? They, they give, they, I got to ask her. They give me coffee. They give <laughs> yeah. me coffee that you see in all these so stores. So feed your yeah. habit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, I don't always drink it. Um, so when, let me ask when, you. When, when, so so when, 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 do you, when do you drink? Because some people with coffee, they have a routine with coffee. Like for me, I get asked all the time, do you drink coffee? And I say, I, I have and I do sometimes. Like right now I'm on a cycle where I was reading, and again, whether, you know, back into diets, whatever, like right. whether it have the same effect on me or not, right. eh, we'll see. Uh. I have a cup of coffee uh, after my workouts in the morning with like some maca yeah. and some 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 supplements. Yeah, that's good. Maca's good. Yeah, so, good. and and it's yeah. like my routine because they were saying that there's like a window after a workout that caffeine. Obviously, where you get caffeine, you don't have a soda or anything like that. Yeah. But a, like a cup of coffee it gives you the most benefit, uh, long term benefit, not right. just like energizes you for that. Right, hey, right. whatever. I just want to know what your thoughts. Like, do you yeah. have a routine with your coffee? How often? Well, I, I, I was I was drinking coffee at least two or three times a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, in, in the morning, first, first thing in the morning. I mean, like, that's, not that, that's not that oh, bad of a – After the workout. Yeah. I was drinking after the workout. Okay. But, you know, the fasting. Here's what I used to do. I used to fast. This is no kidding. Uh, I used to fast two days a week, every Wednesday and Friday for like 14 years. Wednesday and Friday. Yeah, but it was religious beliefs, you know. Okay, because I was saying that's a weird for health reason. That's a weird way. Yes, yeah, because you know I'm, I'm Catholic, so you know I, I would fast, and because uh, you know like right now we're going through Lent, you know. Right, mm-hmm. right. But if I fast now, I'm gonna kill myself because uh, I'm not already eating right now <laughs> yeah, anyway, and survive. I don't eat meat. Yeah. So yeah. you know, once you get over sixty, you know, uh, if you're Catholic, you don't have to worry about not eating meat. Like they don't eat meat, uh, you know, during the week they eat fish. On, on Friday, yeah, you know that type of thing. Sure. Uh, are, are you are you are you don't eat meat on, on Fridays, whatever. Are good you, Friday. Yeah, Good Friday. And I give up certain things, mm-hmm. you know, like like um, for Lent. For Lent, for Lent, I give up certain things. But yeah, I fasted for like uh, fourteen years, twice a week, and so I was going to grad school, right? So the lady, the professor goes, uh, Lou, how do you do so well in all your tests? You know, my first eight classes, eight straight A's, right? Mm-hmm. You know. So I says, uh, I fast. She goes, you fast? I go, yeah. I fast before every test uh, because it clears your mind. Fasting, I think, clears your mind. Food confuses your mind. It makes you lethargic. It clears everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) And when I was fasting, you know what I was doing? When she would give the seminar like four weeks ago, the, the the what do you call it the uh, the lecture, the lecture? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was I was retrieving that stuff that crap from way back four weeks ago. Wow. I would retrieve it, retrieve it. She couldn't believe it. Improve she re- your memory. Yeah. Listening yeah. skills. Yeah. So so when you say fast, because there's a lot of different types yeah. of fasting. Fast meaning 24 hours liquids only or. Well, when I was fasting, it was basically 24 hours. Sometimes I one time I did 32. My best days have been in the 30s. You know, because I just my this is what would happen. When you fast as long as I fasted for back then, guess what does your body do? It shuts down naturally. Mm-hmm. Naturally. So, so but I drank a lot of water. I drank a lot of water. Not not uh, like juices or anything, but just, just water. Straight water. And then yeah. after a while, you forget that you haven't eaten. Your wife got to remind you. Yeah. So when your family says, you need to eat. Yeah. You know? 
And you know, I think you're well, I mean, crazy. That, that's one of those things. When you get your body into a routine, your body does crazy yes, things yes. to stay in that routine. Yes. And so, if every Wednesday your body knew it shut down, it shut down because there was it's that and internal Friday. clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd be like, okay, we're we're doing this yes. again. Let's keep it. And as you continue going through the process, it's no different than like we talked a little earlier about diets and things like that. Like everybody's a little bit different on how right. their diet. But if you got into the routine, you're going to see results from right, it, and right. your body will then change. We see yeah. it with these. Uh, keto diets where people are in this routine like you just it's a shock to your your system right. but after you get through that shock your body starts generating what it needs your body is very smart <laughs> and then it, yeah go ahead it's like when i when i travel on the airplane right we're going to france you know i always gotta say french africa because that's where i go and they always come uh, what would you like you know would you like i would always say oh nothing not you sure it's you know it's 11 and a half hour plane flight so i'm not eating from the night before 11 and a half hours until we land. So I'm already fasting 24 hours plus. Yeah. Because I'm not going to eat something that I'm not really comfortable eating. I'm not, yeah. first of all, I don't eat airplane food. Yeah. I've yeah. never, I, 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 I don't eat airplane food. Vegan seen, or otherwise, yeah. it don't matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen the documentary on it. I, 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 I kind of know what goes into that air, yeah, I don't airplane, eat airplane food. food so um, so I, I, I try to, if I don't get to where I need to go, like to a vegan uh, store to get the vegan food to take on the plane, um, I'm, 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 I'm a, Creek. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. But I got to prepare myself. I was yeah. say, vegans know. have to prepare a prior plan yes, a lot. Yes. And I don't drink, um, I try not to drink juices, you know. Uh, I don't drink sodas. I haven't drank a soda in so long. I don't even drink sodas. Yeah. No, I don't drink sodas. Uh, my last time eating a hamburger was probably 30 something years ago, was a beef burger. Because oh, I had given them up quite a while. But yeah. the thing is, like I said, when I'm on the plane, they always look at me like I'm crazy. And I see <laughs> the other people, they're just scarfing away. Yeah. You know, yeah. They're, and they're looking at me, and why isn't he eating? Because I just don't do it. I don't yeah. either. I think, I think, I mean. Fasting is actually good for you. People don't understand yeah. it. But it really is. I, 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 I can't remember when I started because, I, first of all, I told you this story. I, I watched, there was a, 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 I don't think it's still on there. It might be on there. On Netflix, there's a, a, a documentary called Fasting. Right. So I checked it out. And I realized, cause I always thought of fasting as, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, right. 19, water only. Okay. I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. But it turned out there's different like different types of fasting, yes, and, and, and I didn't realize that I was through through the years doing intermittent fasting without even knowing it. Right, right. And so, like typically, I mean, I'm saying like every single day, I didn't have like a pattern, but almost ninety percent of the time, I was like within that like you know, fourteen hours, twelve hours of of between meals, right? right. And I thought. And I thought about that, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna, I just will take a little tweak in what I normally do. Right, right. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So, so right now, I, and they say, you know, some people do it seven days a week. Some people just do it during the week. On weekends, they're a little bit more free. Right, more flexible. So I gave myself that goal, too. It was like five days a week, I'm going to do it. On weekends, whatever. And it, I, I kind of still do it on weekends without even thinking yeah, about it. It's like about naturally, it. right? So I, the latest I'll eat is 8 o'clock. Usually, it's like 6 or 7. Right. Uh, I won't eat. I'll, I'll go my workout. Right. And that was my biggest concern was how am I going to be – I can deal with like a growling stomach if that was going to happen. Right. But how am I going to deal with energy, whatever? Didn't affect me at all. No. I, I typically – all right, and, I, and, I, and again, I don't hold myself to like I have to do this because then it becomes right. a, an obsession. I just naturally, you know, let things occur. But I, I, I usually stay stay on track no matter what. I mean as far as – without any thought. Mm. Uh, I don't eat to typically 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And like I said, sometimes that might be my only meal. Right. But I, I do have, I when I get too. home, I get 6 or 7, and I don't even think about right, it. Right, right. Yeah, I'm living like you're living. You know, and it's, and it's, it didn't take much. Like, I, I tell my mom, because she, you know, like most women, a lot of women are worried about their weight, whatever. And, and then according to this documentary, right, now, I'm not saying we're, we're, we all, we're in agreement that diet's very important and what you eat and how you eat and all that. Right, right. But according to this documentary, there was a famous study done that they had like lab rats that ate nothing but, uh, and again, it, it depends. I don't I don't know the study as far as what kind of vegan diet, but they were fruits and vegetables, like right. no junk food. Right. You know, like a normal run of the mill vegan, you know, mm. without going into detail as far as soy and all that stuff. And the other one, Nothing but McDonald's. Right. And I forget how long it was, how long a period of time, but it was a long period of time. And afterwards, the the the, the rats that ha- ate healthy had higher blood pressure, diabetes, all these issues. Right, right. Oh, I'm sorry, the key component. They got to eat 
whenever they wanted to eat. Right. But it was all healthy food, but eat as much as they wanted right, as right. often. These guys, it was junk food, but they only got fed like two hours of the day or three hours a day. Mm -hmm. They had improved health, blood pressure lowered. They were healthier right. than these guys. Now, I'm not saying it was, you know, scratch yeah. diet, but it, it tends to, 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 to point in the direction that if they're both important, but the most important of the two elements is not what you eat, it's when you when eat. You eat yeah. yes. Obviously, if you overeat too, but I told, I told my mom, I said, look, just, just don't get so fixated on juicing and what it yeah, is yeah. right now. Limit your, your window time when you eat, right? Uh, you know, and then once you get in that routine where it becomes habit, then worry about how much you eat and then worry about what you eat. Mm -hmm. And just do some activity, even if it's just walking around the block. You know, you get bored of that certain spot, okay, you know, one day you go a little further. Yeah, move, yeah. And that, that becomes, you know, that mix it up. Yeah. Or, you know, the time of day so you don't get bored with it. And to me, and, and maybe it's just me because I'm biased because I'm, I'm always kind of thinking about those kind of things. M unless you're bedridden, even then there's a different path for you, but let's say you, you're able to walk around, just do that. Right. When you eat, let's, let's ratchet that down because – we're in this, this this zone of breakfast in the morning till you're stuffed. Everybody gets seconds, mm -hmm. and they, they're like this. Right. And then literally two hours later, because noon is lunch, they, they load up again. Right. So they still haven't burnt off breakfast. Now they just piled on lunch, yeah. right? And then and then dinner's at 6 or 7. So they, they the biggest window is four hours, but they, they're they playing catch-up, Yeah. right? And then and then they, they have a midnight stack. Right, 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 right. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. I think the most important thing, like he said, is uh, like what he just explained, something about eating, when to eat, and uh, how much to eat. But movement is so important. You have yeah. to move. I was telling someone this to morning. To burn it, right? Yeah, to burn I was telling someone this morning, you, you're on the mat working out, so you, you couldn't have heard what I was saying because you're focusing on what you're doing. But my point, what I was saying was, when you're 60 years old, like my age, you should not be starting to get ready to go to the doctors. <laughs> Remember when we talked about yeah, this? Yeah, Remember yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. You see people at 60 some years old, now they're starting to go to the doctors an awfully lot. For, you know, when for, you're on death, death's bed, now yeah. you go to the doctor? Yeah, <laughs> you, you got to have been going to the doctors like yeah. like he said when we were talking this morning, taking that yearly physical. Mm -hmm. You have to get it. And when you get our age, say when you get 50 or 45, now you got to start getting the thing that men don't like, the prostate <laughs> physical. About, you got to do it. You have to do it, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then you got to watch the colon. You got to get a colonoscopy. So I'm into all that health stuff. So there's a lot yeah. of chemistry going on in yeah, there. Yeah, in the stomach. Oh, this is but, like... A, but a gut biome. Yeah, right? the, hey, the stomach is so huge now. Yeah. You know, as far as how, what they're detecting, a lot of diseases yeah. come through the stomach. Yeah. If you don't get that, col that colonoscopy, and I guess what, I'm coming up in another year or two. <laughs> Dude, I don't like it. Because yeah. you got to do, you ever, you know, I, I've never had to do You're still it. young. You're still yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, when you get 50, guess what? You got to start doing it. Check it out. When you get, when you go through the preparation, you're going to probably go to the bathroom uh, over 30 times. Oh, jeez. Yes. <laughs> you got to clear, you gotta clear everything clear, out, yeah. man. It's yeah. crazy. And you're like, yeah. oh, my gosh. You're oh, uncomfortable oh. for about a, about a day, maybe. I know. Uh, have three of them. Yeah. Three of them. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I'm, but, I'm on track but. To have you like don't try to have one now, huh? Yeah. You yeah. Get Ready it done. That and the other. With the yeah. prostate? At least like after 50, right? Yeah. yeah. You like, gotta, uh, you gotta, yeah. I know yeah. I got to do it. I know. I just, you have well, to do it. Well, I mean, it, it's. Can I buy me dinner first? I might. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing the, the prostate one April 4th. Oh, man. Yeah. And I mean, but that that's the thing, to be aware of your health, because if, if you're not, that thing sneaks up on you, yeah. and all of a sudden, you're, you're screwed. Yeah, you're screwed. That's, that's you the reality. You know one that, that, that this touches home with me that people avoid a lot too, and they don't think of it near as health. They think of it more as hygiene, not health. Which one is that? Your teeth. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I had my grandfather never went to the dentist, right? And because if they went to the dentist regularly, yeah. they could detect he because a lot of diseases and whatnot sink into your body yes. through your teeth. Yes. And if you don't take care of them, and he was my my grandfather was like a like a a cowboy to I mean six yeah. foot whatever he was yeah. like the top. He, and then it went downhill, like literally within a, a year. Yeah. It went from robust to, you know, can barely feed himself. Yeah, Because you know? yes, yes. he didn't go to fucking dentist. He's right. Yeah. I learned that in grad school. Yeah. We, we neglect our teeth. Yeah. There's we're thinking, oh, just brush your teeth and that's it. Yeah. No, you got to do a lot more to it. Yeah. 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 Um, we're coming up just about on our two hour mark here. So oh. before we uh, end this up, uh, I do want to give you a little bit of opportunity to uh, promote yourself. But I, before we get to that point, 
I do want to ask one last question of you. Um, if you had a giant billboard on the major highway that you can get any message Everyone across sees. to everybody out there, what what would that like one message be or like and why? Yeah. Wow. That, that's, that's <laughs> that's a good I one. can't take credit for the yeah. question. It's yeah. not mine. It's yeah. one, uh, someone a lot smarter yeah. than I am. I'm yeah. just well, taking so it. So what, 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 what would the one thing be? Yeah. If you had a billboard to put anything on it that yeah. the world could see. I, 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 I would say the richest thing that you can have in life is health. Okay. It's health in your faith. If you got health and faith, you're on your way. Uh, more powerful than money. More I powerful agree. than wealth. That's true. But you got to have your health. You got to have faith. You got to believe in something. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and the health, if there's no health, then you don't have no chance to say to make any money. Yeah. You don't have no chance to go out and make a decent, to live a, a, a to happy enjoy life. enjoy that money. Yeah, 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 to enjoy it. So health and your faith are the number the, the, the two things that I would say that everyone needs to focus on. Okay. Now, what are you going to do to do that? And, and and look at it like this. I feel that, okay, you can be rich. Go ahead and be rich. Yeah. You're probably going to forget about your health because yeah. you already got everything you want. Yep. But Sac That's your sacrifice. Yeah, that's your sacrifice. But I'm telling you, you're more happier to me if you're going to wake up every morning, know that you feel good, uh, you got you're in good health, and know that you believe in something a higher, a more higher power. Something bigger than yeah, you. Yeah, something right? bigger than you, which is you know that the the all, all the, the almighty, almighty. Yep. God. You know that that's my belief. You know. And there's a lot of words that I don't know if they can fit it all on a billboard, yeah, but yeah. we'll get I will get the key benefit <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Health and faith. Health, health, yeah. and, health and faith. Is health that. and faith. You, you can't beat it. Yeah. You know, like right now, I say plant based and CBD <laughs> oil. You know, go get Swiss yeah. CBD oil because we're gonna have we're gonna launch it another uh, two to three weeks. There you go. We're gonna launch that stuff. Yeah, awesome. Any social media? Anyway, yeah, if, if they gonna, can find you a yeah, little bit they're, more information, they're gonna accept Instagram for me uh, to where they can find me on Instagram. Uh, probably, uh, uh, it's gonna probably be Swiss uh, in Instagram or or, or Lou's, uh Instagram. You'll be able to find me there. You know, don't forget we got the movie The Game Changer coming out that's going to be on Netflix that we showed up at the uh, Sundance Festival in awesome. uh, Park, uh, Park uh, Utah. I think it's Park, Park City, City, Utah. Park City, yeah. Utah, which was really a, a nice uh, a documentary yeah. Yeah, that, that they put on on, on uh, James Wilkes awesome. uh, with the help and support of uh, uh, James Cameron. Uh, we have that going on. Uh, I also have some stuff called Armor Heat that is a pretty good product. You know, uh, for injuries and also helping to get your metabolism going by rubbing it on your body before you work out. It helps you to sweat. But there's a lot of good things going on. But my first and foremost thing is, like, what I really believe in, you got to have faith. You got to have health. All the things that I'm um, promoting uh, or trying to uh, say out loud to you people, uh, they wouldn't do me any good if I don't have you know, my health you and my faith. You know? Exactly, yeah. My, you know, God comes first and anything after that. You know, and uh, health. Oh, gravy. Yeah, I don't care if I got but a penny. I rather be like I always tell you, but I rather be poor and broke. Like you see them homeless people be living out there. Mm -hmm. I rather be one of them and rich and living like I'm dying tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I got all that money. Yeah, there's a lot of situations. There's, like a, that. there's a lot of rich men. Yeah. that can't buy health and can't buy faith. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, my man, right there. <laughs> put it. He hit the put the, hit the, the mic. Mic. Drop the yeah. mic. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, Lou, thank you very much. Thank it's you. been a very exciting talk with you, and I enjoyed it uh, for sure. If you guys uh, enjoyed it, please uh, subscribe, like the video. Definitely go check out what Lou is doing and everything else uh, that he is supporting as well. Um, guys, thank you for joining us here on Tax City Unfiltered Episode 5. We'll see you guys on the next episode.